From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find all the differences between McDonald's in the US and Australia. This is Food Wars. Before we get started, I wanted to introduce our new host, Britt. She is going to be our Food Wars expert down in Australia, and I hope you guys love her as much as I do. She is lovely. In the US, our fries come in four sizes, kids, small, medium, and large. In Australia, our fries come in three different sizes, small, medium, and large. Let's weigh our largest fry. I am so impressed by this stack, by the way. This is a masterpiece. Wow. Get a load of that stack of fries. Very impressive. That's it for me. Bye. What about the iconic Big Mac? Let's weigh it. Some of our burger options come in different sizes to the US. We have a single cheeseburger, a double cheeseburger, and a triple cheeseburger. Over here, the standard McDonald's cheeseburger only comes in two sizes, the single or the double. Our McDonald's drinks come in four sizes, extra small, which we could not get, small, medium, and large. Our drinks in Australia come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. 12 fluid ounces is the size of a can of Coke, so it's so wild to me that that is the smallest size of beverage you could get at McDonald's. Let's measure our largest drink. Our largest drink came out to 800 milliliters when we're supposed to be getting 946. That is egregious. That's so, so unfair. It's not even 600. It's not even 600, but, but what number is it? <laughs> so our large is coming at 520 milliliters. 650 to 520 is a massive difference. Daylight robbery. Chicken nuggets in the US come in five sizes, a four piece, a six piece, a 10 piece, a 20 piece, and a 40 piece. Our chicken nuggets come in five sizes. We have a three piece, a six piece, a 10 piece, a 20 piece, and a 40 piece. Finally, another country matches us with the 40 piece. It's only taken us two years of food wars to find one. Here is everything at an Australian McDonald's you won't find in the US. Here's everything at a US McDonald's you won't find in Australia. There are a lot of things over here that you can't find in the States, like these socks. We're gonna break them down into categories and go through them all. I really need to try these socks on because they are amazing. Look at that, fashion, fun. I'm gonna feel like a criminal. With these bad boys. Hamburglar. Starting with the beef burgers, we have a classic Angus, a barbecue bacon Angus, a spicy, sticky barbecue Angus. We have a triple cheeseburger, big brekkie burger, which I just couldn't resist and I really needed to try that. And then we have a McFeast and then we finish off with the double Big Mac. It's massive. I think you taste more meat than the actual like sauce with the combination of the meat. I think just a regular Big Mac is probably better because you get more flavor. So if you look at these burgers that we have here, this Angus looks a little bit more premium than the others. I definitely think there's a culture in Australia that really enjoys high quality beef, high quality burgers, which is why these do so well here. Here are the exclusive burger options. We have a McDouble, my favorite, and then we have two quarter pounders with cheese. One just has bacon on it. I think what makes it different than a double cheeseburger is that the double cheeseburger has two slices of cheese and no ketchup. Confirm or deny that right here for me. The McDouble also has thinner patties, which I prefer to the thicker ones. Moving on, I do wanna try one of the quarter pounders. I'm going for the one with bacon in it because obviously, it looks like a perfect little burger. You could be in commercials. It's not good. So this is the Quarter Pounder Deluxe with cheese. Next, let's take a look at our chicken and fish options we have over here. First and starting strong, we have a Deluxe Chicken. It's a grilled chicken with lettuce, tomato, mayo. It's aioli. And moving on, we have our McSpicy. Smells peppery. It's got a bit of a kick, but I wouldn't say that it's Oh, oh, it's the after kick. It gets spicy. Oh my gosh, it's creaming up on me. 
I actually really like this. Next one is the double McChicken. This is a heavy burger. Two pieces of chicken on it. You're not missing out on this in America. Thumbs down. Mm -mm. While we're talking about chicken, we have a bunch of chicken wraps here in Australia. Starting with the Caesar Grilled Chicken McWrap. We have a Caesar Crispy Chicken McWrap. We have an Aioli Grilled Chicken McWrap. Another Aioli Crispy Chicken McWrap. And then we have a Grilled Chicken Snack Wrap. And we were supposed to have a whole meal, but there's no whole meal wraps available. Let's try the Aioli Grilled Chicken McWrap. That's really good. It's really light. Used. I wouldn't mind having a look at the crispy chicken Caesar wrap. The chicken inside as well look really good. It's tearing me down. It's better than the other one, the aioli chicken. Burst of flavor in your mouth. Moving on to our chicken options, we have the spicy McCrispy, the spicy McCrispy Deluxe, and the regular McCrispy Deluxe. I think that deluxe in McDonald's terminology just means it has lettuce and tomato on it. So this is the spicy McCrispy. That is really good and it's actually so spicy. And finally, we have the following salad options. Classic chicken salad. And then we also have a Caesar salad and we have a garden salad that looks really sad. It's quite tragic actually. Little seasoning for the Caesar salad. I don't really care about a salad. McDonald's US used to serve salads, but they started disappearing from menus during the pandemic and have not re-emerged. I, for one, do not miss them. I'm not going to McDonald's for a salad. If I wanted a salad, I'd just go to a salad place, you know? Australians can, of course, enjoy McDonald's iconic Happy Meals, including some things you won't find in America. The grilled chicken snack wrap, grape tomatoes, a Pop-Tart, which is an apple juice equivalent, Imagine if you were a kid and you were like, mom, take me to Macca's and you drove past and she gave you this. <laughs> I like the healthy option, but you'd be absolutely devastated. That is punishment. That is awful. And a little toy. Spot it, classic. Spot what exactly? It's just like, what is this? This is too complicated for me. How would this, this is really boring. I would hate this if I was a kid. No, give me a Tamagotchi or something. I don't know what you give kids like. Kids in the US are limited to just a hamburger or nuggets plus fries and apple slices. One thing I thought was interesting is that you can't get a soda with the Happy Meal anymore. They only really give you juice options or milk, which is what I have here. Our Happy Meal theme is Crash Bandicoot, which I haven't seen since I was a child. I think I had this game on like Nintendo 64. It's, it's very old, but I think it's like a new mobile game collaboration that they're doing. I do want to see what my toy is. Spyro's memory card game. It's a memory card game. That's not that good. I feel like the toys have really gone downhill since I was a kid. We used to get stuff, like good stuff. Wait, is this a card game or no? What? Oh my God, it's like a little, oh, it's a tin. The cards are in the tin. That's actually kind of cute. This is not gonna satisfy the iPad kids. They're gonna put this in the garbage. So here's our little card game. It is kind of cute that they made the box a little Crash Bandicoot crate. That's fun. That's the Happy Meal in the US. Here are the exclusive sides from Macca's. We have some McDonald's land cookies and a petting yum strawberry yogurt. We do also have the mozzarella sticks with chili jam. However, they were out of stock of that today. Oh my gosh, this smell reminds me of my childhood. Can I pull this out? I'm gonna pull this. You've got Ronald McDonald, duck with glasses on. I'm sure that's someone. They're hard cookies, but generally in Australia, our cookies are generally quite hard. I don't know why, but they're delicious. We actually don't have any sides in the US that you can't also find in Australia. The one thing I wish that we had that Australia has is those mozzarella sticks. I would devour some mozzarella sticks right now. Is that time? It's sauce talk. Sauce talk. We actually don't have very many sauces to talk about. I have ranch, plain mustard, and we're missing a regular packet of honey. I'm not really sure why they have honey as a sauce option. Like, what do you use that for? I guess you could use it on the biscuits. I know what ranch tastes like. I know what mustard tastes like. We don't have to talk about it anymore. Sauce talk is over. 
Here are the Aussie exclusive sauces. We have a wasabi flavored mayo, a truffle flavored mayo, aioli sauce, and sweet mustard. All right, let's try it. So this is the aioli. Yum, quite garlicky as well. So this is the sweet mustard. It's just not a bit of meat. But yeah, aioli is like a classic here. Anything with garlic, anything with like a really strong flavor that makes people want to stay far away from you when you speak and breathe, we're onto it. If you actually manage to wake up in time for breakfast, then you'll find a ton of exclusive breakfast items here in the US. McDonald's actually did do an all day breakfast menu, which was revolutionary. Lives were changed. And then in March of 2020, they stopped and we went back to breakfast until 11. 11 doesn't sound like that early of a time, but for me, yeah, it is. <laughs> and in the US, you can obviously get your breakfast sandwich on a variety of vessels, like the biscuit. We also have the McGriddle, which is essentially two little pancakes with a bunch of syrup holes. So the syrup is already incorporated into the pancake bun. And whoever thought of this as a sandwich, something special happened, something shifted, because this is one of the greatest things I've ever seen and tasted. We don't have that here, but I can't say I'm particularly jealous. The idea of having syrupy pancakes as like a bun with me is just a bit weird. However, I know that you guys rave on about it. So I'd be really, really inclined to try it because I want to know how it would actually taste. There's also the McMuffin, which is an English muffin. There's also a variety of different proteins that you can get in your breakfast sandwich. Like I'm seeing ham, bacon, sausage, and now steak which was a shock to me. I didn't hear anything about McDonald's adding steak to its breakfast menu, but we got it. Let's start with this steak biscuit. In my brain, when I saw the steak on the menu, I was like, wow, they're doing like little bits of steak. That's actually so impressive. This is a burger patty in a breakfast sandwich form. It doesn't taste bad. This is my favorite McGriddle. It's the bacon, egg, and cheese. All those little dark spots, those are the syrup holes. <laughs> These are always gonna hit for me. They're good. This is the McMuffin with Canadian bacon, cheese, and egg. The egg on this one is a little different than the rest. It's supposed to be a freshly cracked egg. I wasn't in the room when this was made, so I can't speak on that, but it looks different than the folded egg, obviously. That was a little tough. <laughs> And lastly, we have the sausage burrito. That's pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. Moving on to the breakfast meals. These are like bigger portions. There's more stuff involved. It's not just a quick little sandwich. We have the big breakfast. There's the big breakfast with hotcakes, which comes with all of that stuff, plus some hotcakes. There's the hotcakes with a sausage patty, and all the hotcake meals come with whipped butter and syrup, duh. The hotcakes at McDonald's are a little, they taste kind of fake. Like they don't taste like real pancakes, but I'm a big fan of them. I don't know. There's something very nostalgic about the hotcakes for me. We also have the fruit and maple oatmeal, which comes with fruit. And I am assuming maple already incorporated into the oatmeal. Let's pour these in. Okay, this actually smells really good. Am I just hungry? It's a good oatmeal. I would order that again doesn't taste too sweet. And the parts that are sweet are fruit, so I don't really feel bad eating it. We only have a couple of exclusive breakfast bites here in Australia. We have the Mighty McMuffin or the Big Brekkie Burger. If you can see, two patties, onion and a hash brown, cheese, egg. I don't think my mouth is gonna open up like wide enough to <laughs> All right, I, I'm, I'm slightly intimidated. That is so good. Unreal, I recommend that. So now we have the Mighty McMuffin. It's not a regular McMuffin. It's better than that. It's not as flavorful as this. This is a subtle explosion, not a full earthquake. This is, I know that looks like, I actually really like it. So here we have all of our McCafe exclusive drinks. First up, we have the iced French vanilla latte, which sounds very good. It's sweet. That is very sweet. They're giving Duncan a run for their money. 
It doesn't taste bad because it's a French vanilla coffee, but that's way too sweet for me. We also have that latte hot. Next, there's the iced French vanilla coffee, which I actually might like this more. Yeah, this one is way better to me. It actually tastes more like coffee and not milk. Next, we have a caramel cappuccino. This is a vanilla cappuccino, and we have the iced caramel macchiato. Let's try the caramel cappuccino. I'm not a huge fan of the taste of this one. We're missing the Americano and the Frap, which I've had before. It is very sweet. You will find Macca's Mac Cafe items in both the US and Australia, but the offerings are pretty different. So these are our McCafe drinks. We have our Long Black, which is basically an Americano, but better. And we have our English breakfast tea, our Earl Grey tea, we have a green tea, a peppermint tea, a piccolo latte, and a little baby chino. I'm really jealous of those cute little coffees that you have in Australia. I want that little tiny baby cup. We have our ice long black, our deluxe creme brulee, which is ice and not here. And we also have our iced chocolate, a coffee frappe, a deluxe caramel iced coffee. We have also a deluxe hazelnut iced coffee. And then last but not least, our vanilla deluxe iced coffee. I really wanna try this iced chocolate. That's not gonna be good for my stomach, but this is really good. It's like a cocoa powder chocolate flavor. Like it's not too rich. Teas at Macca's, I don't know anyone that would get a tea. I mean, unless you're like a British expat. I wanna try peppermint tea because, did I put milk in my peppermint tea too? What? Why would you put milk in a, in a herbal tea? Oh, that's putrid. Did you know that Mac Cafe was actually created in Australia, in Melbourne in 1993? The first cafe was opened in Swanson Street, I'm pretty sure. We pride ourselves in our coffee, especially people in Melbourne. Without Melbourne or Australia, you wouldn't be having Mac Cafe. So thank you. I will take all the glory. This is our McCafe food. We have a barbecue bacon and cheese toasty, which we don't have here. We have a ham and cheese toasty. We have a cheese and tomato toasty. We have a cheesy toasty, banana bread with blueberries. We really like banana bread here. And then just your plain banana bread. We usually stock raisin toast with butter, but they were out of stock for that today. We have our double chocolate muffin, an apple crumble muffin. We also have a chocolate donut. And because we like to keep it a little bit fancy, we have a chocolate macaron and we also have a salted caramel macaron. Australians, we really love our caramel. Salted caramel, normal caramel, we have it with everything. That's a really nice salted caramel. Good job, Maccas. Another thing we're missing here in the US McCafe is the food. Those are all gone from the menu and we have a theory. We have a theory that it's because they're opening up their new Cosmics restaurant, which is, I guess, a McCafe turned into a restaurant. It's gonna be like bakery items and coffees and just that. If you wanna end your Macca's meal with a sweet treat, we have some exclusive dessert options for you. Starting off with a Milo McFlurry, there was supposed to be a Malteser, but they were all out of them. So we got the best, the better option, which is Milo. If you don't know what Milo is, Milo is an Australian like classic. You can put it in your drinks. You can put it in um, on ice cream. It's just a chocolate powder that is so good. We didn't have a raspberry and custard pie. They were sold out of that as well. We have a strawberry sundae, a caramel sundae, and then we have <laughs> a Cadbury flake soft serve. Oh my gosh, the flake has been consumed by the ice cream. You can't even see the flake anymore. RIP. We have our frozen Fanta raspberry, frozen Fanta blueberry, frozen Fanta mango, and our frozen Fanta grape. I really wanna try this Milo McFlurry. Literally what my dreams have been made of. This is unreal. This is so yum. Our only exclusive dessert option is the chocolate chip cookies, which I think in the realm of fast food cookies, this is definitely at the top because they stay soft and they're actually pretty good. A perfectly fine chocolate chip cookie. 
outside of my cafe drinks, we have a couple of exclusive soft drinks here in Australia. We have a vanilla Coke, we have a Coke Zero and sparkling water. While it's technically not an exclusive, it's also worth noting that in Australia, we call our milkshakes thick shakes. The reason why we call our milkshakes thick shakes is because a milkshake is different in Australia. So a milkshake is literally just a sweetened milk. So if you were to get a strawberry milkshake, it would just be a really thin strawberry tasting milk. With a thick shake, it's a thicker consistency. In front of me though, I have the sweet tea, the orange high C, and the two milk options that they offer, which is regular and a chocolate milk. Do not be fooled by this very naturally occurring color. It is not real fruit juice. High C is something entirely its own thing. Australians love McDonald's, or it's more commonly known here as Macca's. The nickname is so popular that McDonald's has actually leaned into it and formally embraced it. It's always called Macca's. That being said though, it can get confusing as Macca can also refer to anyone with a surname that starts with MC or Mac, M-A-C. So McDonald's equals Macca's. But Paul McCartney, for an example, is also called Macca. So the context is really crucial here. McDonald's has the second highest number of stores of any fast food chain in Australia, ranking just below Subway. That number stands to rise too, with reports saying that McDonald's is planning to spend a billion Australian dollars opening and renovating stores in the coming years. Anecdotally, I think Macca's is way more popular than Subway, just because it's convenient and I think it, everyone always craves like a burger and I feel like the idea of Subway isn't as appealing as McDonald's is. There are over 13,000 locations here in the US, so I think it's fair to say that Americans love their McDonald's. You can't go like a few miles without seeing Golden Arches. They are absolutely everywhere. I don't know a single person who's never tried it. I don't think America has a national dish, but if we did, I'd feel like it would be a burger, fries, a milkshake, and or a soda. Like that's so American in my brain, and that's why McDonald's in itself feels like such an American food chain. McDonald's Australia has tried to adapt its menu to local tastes over the years. One of the examples was that of the recent potato scallop controversy. Yes, I know, it sounds bizarre. What is a potato scallop? So many questions. But in January of 2023, Macca's announced a new menu item and it was called a potato scallop with chicken salt. So this sparked an online debate as the states of Victoria and Tasmania refer to this as a potato cake, whereas other areas call it a potato fritter. Some claim that the name is an insult to potato cakes. To be honest, I don't Hair. but so many Australians do and it is like institutionalized in them that they need to care about what a potato cake is actually called. Basically, if you also don't know what a potato cake is, it's literally just like a deep fried potato with chicken salt on, on top of it. And chicken salt is also an Australian classic. It's sadly not on the menu anymore. So at least that debate can be put on hold for now. In America, I would say that McDonald's is pretty much exactly the same everywhere. I don't think that they adapt to local tastes to that degree, but they do vary from country to country. So for you Americans, I have some hot tea to share with you. So basically somebody said our prime minister had shit his pants at Inga Dean McDonald's in 1997 after a football grand final. It was such a popular response. Like so many people kept on like trolling him online, like on Twitter and just being like, Scott Morrison, did you actually shit your pants? And he would ignore it, but eventually he went to an event. I, I think it may have been a charity event and he had to address it, but he left us in the lurch, basically still saying he can't confirm nor deny if he shat his pants at McDonald's in 1997. We need some closure, Scott Morrison. If you're listening to this, just tell us the truth. The people have a right to know this information. We can't talk about McDonald's and not mention the McDonald's cast of characters. Grimace just had his birthday in which we got a celebratory Grimace shake. It was okay. But there's others like Ronald McDonald, which I feel like as a kid, he was such a big deal. Nowadays, McDonald's doesn't really push their characters the way that they used to. 
After a little bit of digging, we found out that McDonald's kind of took Ronald out of the spotlight a bit after the 2016 clown scare. Do you guys remember this? People were dressing up like clowns to try to terrify people with like weapons and stuff. It was like a whole issue. People were just doing it to scare people and they said, Ronald, unfortunately, we're gonna have to sit you out for the rest of your life. He's still on the cake though. He's still on the sheet cake, so I think that counts for something. Oh, the sheet cake we didn't get. By the way, McDonald's has a sheet cake that you can ask for. <laughs> they did try to phase the characters back in in 2022 with the adult Happy Meal, which featured all of the old characters, but I don't know if they're taking off as much as they did in the 90s. A Big Mac in the US costs 13.8% more. But if you go with a medium, you'll be paying around 0.6% less in the US. And a large Big Mac meal is 2.8% less in the US. Here's the nutrition of our Australian Big Mac. Here's the nutrition breakdown of a US Big Mac. We have more calories, fat, carbs, sugar, and sodium, but less protein. Interesting. Our medium fries has 297 calories. Our fries have more calories and more carbs, yet less sodium and less sugar. That's actually a big shocker that we have less sodium because every time I've gotten McDonald's fries, they are like perfectly salty or overly salty. Our medium Coke is 136 calories. Our medium Coke has more calories, but also the cup is bigger. So the total meal is 997 calories. And the U.S. total is 1,120 calories. That's a 12.3% increase in the U.S. Here are the ingredients of an Australian Big Mac. A key distinction between the beef in Australia and the U.S. is the majority of cattle in our country is grass-fed. While in the U.S., beef is mostly grain-fed. Grain-fed tends to have a bit more of a uniform taste and texture whereas grass-fed is heavily influenced by seasonal and regional factors, resulting in a diverse range of complex flavors and textures. Additionally, the high concentration of beta-carotene in grass contributes to a more pronounced taste in the fat found in grass-fed beef. The taste can be quite different and Australians take pride in their meat. A US Big Mac contains all of this. A few things to note, the pickle slices contain alum, which is used to dissolve steel, and polysorbate 80, which has been linked to colon cancer. This means we can cue the dancing mice. Caramel color is on California's list of chemicals that may cause cancer or reproductive toxicity. One thing we want to note is the quality of the US Big Mac and McDonald's burgers in general. In November, McDonald's revamped how it cooks and prepares its burgers, including the Big Mac. They've added more sauce, upgraded to a buttery brioche bun, the cheese is more melty, and the vegetables are fresher. There actually aren't very many vegetables in this burger, but the lettuce doesn't look wilted. Like, it looks like fresh lettuce. These are the ingredients in our fries, which are vegan-friendly. Woo! -hoo. Here's everything that's in the McDonald's fries. In the US, they are not vegan-friendly because there is a beef flavoring added in. Whatever they're doing, I'm sorry, it's working. These fries are good. <laughs> and in Australia, our Coke is actually made out of real sugar. Whereas the US Coke contains high fructose corn syrup. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out the differences between Hungry Jack's Australia and Burger King in the US. This is Food Wars. First things first, you might have noticed there's a difference in the name. Here in Australia, Burger King operates under the name Hungry Jacks because when they first came here, their name was already taken. We'll get more into the history later, but when you hear me saying Hungry Jacks, that's why. Now let's get into the drinks. In Australia, our Hungry Jacks drinks come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. In the U.S., our Burger King drinks come in four sizes. The value, the small, the medium, and the large. Let's measure them to keep them honest. To be fair to Burger King, I filled these up. I think I did a pretty good job. The lid's a little recessed. Yes, there's ice in there. Now let's measure the large. I feel like everything is about four or five ounces off. 
Our fries or chips, as we like to call them in Australia, come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. Our fries come in four sizes, the little value, the small, the medium, and the large. And you know we're gonna weigh them. So these portions should weigh 90 grams, 116 grams, and 166 grams, according to the Hunger Jacks website. So let's see if this is true. Let's have a Both Australia and the U.S. have the Whopper, so let's weigh both of them and compare. All right. Yeah. On to the nuggets. In Australia, our nuggets come in four sizes. Three, six, 12, and 18. Our U.S. nuggets come technically in three sizes. The four-piece, the eight-piece, which in some part of the countries, you can also get the fiery nugget version in eight-piece and a 16 piece, which was not available. Well, I wanna be in the shot. I'm just kidding, because this is my new headshot. Here in the US, we have four sizes of onion rings. Again, value, small, medium, and large. In Australia, our onion rings come in two sizes, a medium and a large. Just eyeballing it right now, looks like we have bigger portion sizes than Australia. I'm gonna count out the rings and the largest and see how it compares to theirs. So in a large serving, we get 12 onion rings. Okay, so this, this is one of the smaller ones we had. Here is everything that you'll find at an Australian Hungry Jack's that you won't find in an American Burger King. And here's everything you can get at a Burger King slash Hungry Jack's in America that you can't get in Australia. Let's get into the burgers. I have to say, my observation in all of this is all of these burgers, not only are they massive, but they look really good. We have a Whiskey River Whopper. You've got onion, you've got lettuce, you've got, you have chips inside, you have tomatoes, two layers of cheese, two burger wop patties. I really like this. I really, really like this. The burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. So there's a saying in Australia, it's one of their slogans, and they always say the burgers are better at Hungry Jack's. And this is really good. I can't taste like whiskey specifically. I don't know if it's, um, I'm not drunk yet. So I think um, there's not whiskey in there. But I think it must be like a whiskey glaze or a whiskey sauce. It's like a caramelized flavor. We have these exclusive US burgers starting all the way down there. The Texas Double Whopper. Same as a regular double whopper, but this one has jalapenos. Tejas. Okay, so you get you're getting your money's worth. There's also bacon in there too. All right. Pretty good. I don't know if I can get a whole one of those, but I like that. We have a double whiskey river whopper. An ultimate double whopper, which is two layers of beef and two layers of cheese. We have your classic whopper, a double whopper and cheese, a triple whopper and cheese and an angry Whopper. And it comes with a single patty or a double patty, or there's a triple beef option if that's what you like. And with angry onions. I don't know what an angry onion is. I've never yeah. met an angry onion before. All right, let's have a bite of the angry Whopper. There's a bit of a spice to it. Nothing too overpowering, it's quite nice. I like this as well, but that's really like a nice subtle kick to it. So that's what makes it angry. If you're wondering, I'm so happy I could solve that problem for you because I'm here to serve. If double meat isn't enough for you, we also have the triple Whopper Australia. Yes, you are correct. That is a bun, then a piece of meat, and then another piece of meat, and then a third piece of meat, and then all the stuff. He's jumping in the middle of the meat. You can't just go meat, meat, meat. Uh, our Whopper doesn't automatically have cheese. You can get a Whopper with cheese, obviously. Um, so this one doesn't have cheese. Texas did have cheese. Um, I don't know why cheese is the default for the Whopper. The Whopper's been around for so long. Back when people wanted regular hamburgers and not cheeseburgers, where I think it's just insanity. And then we have the Bacon Deluxe. Um, this is very similar to the Ultimate Double Whopper. The sizing is the main difference that I can tell, and obviously with the patties and stuff, but the flavor is supposed to be the same. 
Uh, we also have the, the barbecue, bacon, Whopper, Junior, which of course has bacon, American bacon. Now's the perfect time. I know that she was talking about close up of the bacon, so why don't I just do a little something right here for her? All right, all right, check it out, Australia. American bacon. We got the strip bacon. I was gonna be glamour shot. Now we're big, we got the strips. We got the strips. So the bacon in Hungry Jack's is Australian eye bacon, and it looks something like this. If you can manage to see it past all this sauce. Um, I know you guys in America generally prefer your bacon to be a bit crispier and thinner. We do have that option here. However, our rashes of bacon do tend to be quite um, a thicker portion. So it, it, it is thin and crispy on the outside, but the inside, see how it's like a, it's a nice bit of pork. Speaking of bacon, we have the Bacon King. It feels like it's just the Whopper without the vegetables, which I applaud. Look, everyone, they put cheese in between the meats. See, they know how to do it. This is great. I don't know why this would be a whole different menu thing. Just call this the, this should be the Whopper. And then we have a Whopper Junior in cheese, little baby Whopper, and then a triple cheeseburger and a barbecue cheeseburger. Moving on to the much smaller burgers. Look at this, man, the tiny little guys. Bacon cheeseburger. If you want a little more meat in your mouth, and you know I do, go ahead and get yourself the double. Yo, Australia! Ha 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 ha! Look at that cheese pull. It's like an insider video from three years ago. I have no idea what rodeo, if rodeos exist outside of the States or the Americas, uh, and if they don't, we have a thing called rodeos. And for some reason, we have a rodeo burger, and that's just a cheeseburger with barbecue sauce and onion rings. And now we have our Grill Master collection. So this is made from thick, juicy Angus. Starting off to my right, we have the Grilled Masters Pulled Pork and Angus. They went hard on the pulled pork. They didn't shy away from that. You can taste the barbecue sauce, which is surprising because it didn't look like there was much barbecue sauce on it. The pork flavor is coming through ever so slightly, but it's just a texture of the pulled pork and a solid beef patty that I don't really like that much. We have our Grill Master Cowboy Angus. We have our Grill Master Double Cowboy Angus with two Angus patties. And then we have our Grill Master's Chicago Angus patty, double bacon, natural cheese, and peppercorn sauce. I'm also curious to know, like, why did they make a Chicago burger? What is a Chicago burger? Is Chicago a peppery city? I thought it was a windy city. It has a patty, it's got some lettuce, iceberg lettuce, a sauce, which I presume has pepper in it, obviously. Otherwise, I don't know what that black stuff is in it. That would be questionable. And it has a layer of cheese and bacon and tomatoes. I think maybe the reason it's a Chicago style burger is because of the double bacon. I know in the early part of last century, the stockyards were really popular in Chicago. Upton Sinclair wrote a book about it called The Jungle. Don't read it, it's a real bummer. This is, I prefer this to that. This has a lot more flavor. The textures are good. I like the combination of the bacon and the Angus beef. It's really messy though, so don't take someone out on a first date and get the Chicago burger. And now we have our Grill Masters Angus bacon and cheese and then the Grill Masters Double Angus Bacon and Cheese. So there's two Angus patties and two layers of cheese. I just have to say, I'm really impressed by Hungry Jack's. I find that their burgers are really, really good and the, the quality is unreal. Here are all the chicken options exclusive over here in the US. Down here we have the BK Royal Crispy Chicken. Royal, the Burger King Royal, the BK Royal fit for King Philip Charles. Uh, Australian, if you're aware of this, but there's a chicken sandwich civil war going on in this country. Every single fast food place has their chicken sandwich. I think Chick fil A just came in, got everyone scared. Every fast food place, every burger place has at least four chicken sandwiches, sometimes more. And Burger King, I gotta say, they did a good job. Been sitting for a minute, still crispy, very impressive. Crispy the title. Here are all the chicken options that you can get at Hungry Jack's. The Whiskey River Jack's Fried Chicken. So you have some lettuce, you have your whiskey sauce with some chips, onion ring maybe, 
the spicy BK Royal Crispy Chicken Sando. Generous with the mayo. They're moving mayo at BK. They're moving mayo. Everything is dripping with mayo. I don't mind. It's got more heat than I thought it would. Not that I can't handle, but yeah. The Whiskey Revolt Grilled Chicken. The Classic Jack's Fried Chicken. This is just fried chicken with some mayonnaise and some iceberg lettuce. The Spicy Jack's Fried Chicken. And it has spicy sauce on that. Australia, we also have a bacon and Swiss BK Royal Crispy Chicken Sandwich. And here it is. Good, it's a good combo. That's really good, I like that. I probably would get that one over all the other ones. The Cheesy Bacon Classic Jack's Fried Chicken. The Cheesy Bacon Spicy Jack's Fried Chicken. So this would be the spicy sauce. That's a lot of spicy sauce. The Spicy Grilled Chicken, the Grilled Chicken, the grilled chicken with bacon and cheese. And of course, this little guy, the Chicken Junior. If you've ever had a McChicken, it's the same exact thing. Whoa, what's going on here? Is that sauce or is that like... Started skimping on... No, because mayo's on top. What's that? No, I'm licking it. Maybe it is mayo. I don't know what it is. I want to try the cheesy bacon spicy Jack's fried chicken because I haven't been able to get like a spicy burger and this looks like it is <laughs> packed with spice. So let's take a bite into it and see how spicy it really is. That is very spicy. Definitely recommend this one. This one's really, really good. It's such a relief because I feel like every burger that we've had is like says it's spicy, but it's like, where? And last but not least, we have some additional exclusive items. At the Burger King, we have a big fish, which is our fish sandwich. Rivals, of course, the filet fish A square piece of fish. Looks a little rough, right? I like how it tastes. filet fish is better, but I get down on a, on a big fish. Remember those chicken sandwiches from before? We got them in wrap form. Three wraps to choose from. Uh, so first one we have is the classic crispy wrap, sorry. Half a chicken breast. Half, come on guys. You just cut it in half. Can't give us the whole one. Mayo, lettuce, tomato. Nope. This one's a spicy one. Here's the other half. Again, half a chicken breast. I don't know what the price point is, but you're definitely getting half of the chicken you get in sandwich form. We do have a couple of plant-based options at our Burger King. Um, they're not vegan though, because they are cooked on the same grill as the beef burgers and still contain dairy and eggs. Just ah, Burger King, wow, that one. Uh, the Impossible Whopper, which we have here, there's also the single Impossible King. Go ahead and get it for this one. What does the burger taste like, you ask Australia? Well, first of all, let's take a look at it. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
it's it's very filling there's a lot of flavor it's it's got like a herby taste to it um you can taste the onion the cheese is good too i was going to try the cheese separately just to see if that adds any flavor the cheese is just a bit creamy creamy texture a bit more of like a smoky flavor subtle smoky flavor throughout onto the sides australia you don't have these chicken fries get a load of this isn't this a great idea looks like a fry right na 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 this is a piece of chicken they come in i don't know how many different options we got the four piece that came in a bag usually it comes in a fun little box but whatever these things are fantastic mozzarella sticks come in four and eight pieces no way this no way i can do this paul he's been sitting for a minute wait Yo, no. Comes with marinara sauce. Our BK also has applesauce, but uh, they unfortunately forgot it. So uh, no sauce. And in Australia, these are our exclusive sides. We have a three nuggets and chip curry cup. And we have a pop and chicken curry cup and a pop and chicken curry cup plenty pack. However, those were not available. But we do have a load of other sauces. You know what that means? Sauce talk. Sauce talk. Now we're gonna talk about all the sauces we have that are exclusive to Australian Hungry Jacks. Starting with a barbecue plum sauce, aioli. And it's aioli is not just garlic mayo. Traditionally, it's made with garlic and olive oil, whereas mayo uses oil and egg yolks. And then we have our spicy sauce. How spicy is it? I'm about to tell you right now because I'm gonna crack into this. Let's go. It's not that spicy. I think it comes after. It is spicy. Barbecue plum. Never heard of a barbecue plum before. That's really good. It's sweet. It's got that sweet plum kind of jam marmalade flavor, but with that barbecue sauce through it. But I feel like the plum taste comes through more. I really like that. All right, barbecue. Fantastic. Honey mustard. It's okay. Here's our ranch. America is obsessed with ranch. I, of course, am not. I'll try it. Yeah, it's fine. All ranch tastes the same. Moving on, we got buffalo sauce. So we got zesty sauce, Australia. I don't know if this is just for dipping stuff or if it's on a burger. I don't think I've heard of this before. Maybe we've had it before in other food wars and I just don't remember. Let's see how zesty it is. Oh man, that is zesty. It's like a strong mustard, but also creamy. And brown mustard. Also we have sweet and sour sauce. More for nuggets than it is for fries, but why not, right? And before the marinara, you know, I love it. We have other sauces you get here in the US, including stacker sauce, mustard and mayo, tartar sauce, royal sauce, King Charles's favorite, and a spicy glaze sauce. Hungry Jack's also has some brekkie options. Just note, brekkie is short for breakfast here in Australia. If you're aware, we love to shorten our words. So we will call afternoon, arvo, we'll call a snag for a sausage. Tucker is dinner. Back to the items here. Here we have a bacon and egg Turkish brekkie roll. We have our sausage and egg Turkish brekkie roll. We have our Jack's brekkie roll. We have our barbecue brekkie wrap. And we have our big brekkie wrap, which is the same as that one. It just has hash browns in it. And then we have pancakes and onto our cheese toasties. A cheese toasty. We have ham and cheese toasties and a ham, cheese, and tomato toasty. U.S., we love our fast food breakfast, or brekkie, as you would call it in Australia. Starting down here, we have French toast sticks, freckies, I guess. You can get them three or five. Has this nice little syrupy dipping sauce. That's just okay. Uh, we have a lot of breakfast sandwiches in the U.S. You can get a breakfast sandwich in different bread forms. The first one we have is a biscuit. Don't know if you have these in Australia. Try to explain it to non-Americans what American biscuits are. Easier just to show you. You have KFC, right? It's like those biscuits you get at KFC. Um, we have these breakfast sandwiches. See, this little thing, it's like the driest thing in the world. But we have breakfast sandwiches. Here's a bacon, egg and cheese one. Uh, you also get sausage, egg and cheese, ham, egg and cheese. Good, dry, I really don't go for those. What I do like are the croissant sandwiches, another 
bread option. Where it is a croissant. Yes, a croissant, France. And we stuck a bunch of meat and cheese inside of it. Gonna go with the, this one is the bacon one. A fully loaded. <laughs> Sausage and ham and bacon. Oh my goodness. Every version of pork in one sandwich with eggs. I have to, I have to know. Kinda wish I didn't. Kinda wish I didn't. Ugh. Biscuits or croissants, these are the ones you can get. I'm gonna throw on screen the whole list of both the options that you have. Uh, I can't list them all. It's just a different version of the bread with a meat, an egg, and a cheese. Also, at breakfast burritos, believe it. This one, ooh, yo, dog. This is a hefty boy. This, I believe, is the egg Normous burrito. Come on, this thing is like, this has gotta be. This is like a Chipotle burrito. Look at the size of this thing, Yuli. Let's see what's inside. Oh. Australia, I assure you, this is not normal. Uh, hash browns, bacon, sausage, an egg, cheese. It also comes with a picante salsa, which we will find out together. How it is, yeah. Mm. Mm. Breakfast burritos are a big thing in America. Probably in the UK as well, but this is just ridiculous. It's actually really good. And you know what? Secret weapon, there's salsa. I don't know who makes the salsa, but yeah, dude. I'm, I'm having a comeback right now. Oh. If you want a breakfast burrito in not gigantic form, there's also a breakfast burrito junior. Got yourself a sweet tooth. We have two exclusive desserts in the US right here, two chocolate chip cookies. Also, we have this Hershey's Sunday pie. Sunday pie on the go. Look at this thing, look at this thing. You see that, Yuli? I'm kind of mad now that I know this exists. I'm gonna want it all the time. And at Hungry Jack's, these are our dessert options. We have a Storm Biscoff, which wasn't available. Um, a Storm Bubblegum, a Storm Oreo, a Storm Cadbury Flake, a Storm M&M's Mini, a Sticky Day Pudding, a Caramel Sundae, a Strawberry Sundae, a Chocolate Sundae, and a Mini Drumstick Vanilla. Storms, if you're not too familiar, I would say it's quite similar to a McFlurry. The bubblegum looks a little bit terrifying. I really want to try it. It looks kind of gross but the marshmallows on top, it looks ridiculously sweet. This is all that I had to try my ice cream with. Ugh. That was so sweet. It was putrid. It was foul. I didn't even think a child would like that. That is, mm -mm. you can't go wrong with an Oreo. I always get them, but a flake will be good. The, the chocolate is a bit shredded. That is a bit of me. That is a bit of me. Mm -hmm. Nice, creamy, and then a delicious taste of flaky milk chocolate. Burst of flavor in your mouth, not overpowering, and not feeling like you're gonna have to end up in the ER because you have a heart attack. I've even added some more storm flakes to the base of the ice cream, so amazing. Mm. 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 Even though the M&Ms have melted, this is really young. m and always a good choice. I like the m and Storm. This is the, the date, the sticky date. It's living up to the Australian name right now. It's really hot here. We're just about to get into summer. And the sticky date did in fact not make it from the journey from Hungry Jack's to the studio. So this is what we've got. A nice saga sticky date. I've tried a caramel sundae before. Caramel sundaes are really, really popular here. Caramel in general, really popular. But let's give a strawberry sundae a crack. Yeah, just tastes like a strawberry sundae. This drumstick here actually launched in Australia in 1963 and Peters is a classic Australian brand. So this is a national Australian dessert, one could say. A lot of U.S. drinks at the B. Okay, starting right down there, a specific bottle of water, this Pure Life Nestle water. I should drink this. I'm not going to. We also have Diet Coke. Uh, I don't like diets. We have Dr. Pepper. Yeah, the Doc. Mmm, delicious. A uh, Minimade lemonade. This is, I believe, root beer. 
and other drinks you can get for the kids. A little apple juice. They have these things, frozen Fanta wild cherry. It's normally a slushy that would be filled up to here, but as melting. There's also a frozen Coke. Same thing, but Coca-Cola flavored. Um, it's just a melted mess. You can get a uh, regular coffee and an iced coffee. This is the vanilla one, I think. Hang on. This is the, yes, the vanilla iced coffee. Ugh, oh, oh God. It's like all vanilla, too much. Yeah, nah, bottle of milk, kind of weird. And also, Burger King has these two shakes, Oreo shake and a chocolate shake. Yes, Oreo, like the cookie. And this shake is so fantastic, and here's why. It isn't a vanilla shake with chocolate. It's like the, the cream flavor flavored shake. Mmm. It's so good. Mmm. You can also get a chocolate version, too, a chocolate Oreo shake. Too chocolatey. This is the one. This is the best one. Other drinks you can get at the BK in the U.S. we couldn't get, where I just didn't feel like bringing, <laughs> is Sprite Zero, uh, unsweetened iced tea, simply orange juice, frozen Fanta Blue raspberry drink, uh, Powerade Zero, High C Fruit Punch, and Mellow Yellow. These are the drinks that we have at Hungry Jack's. We have Vanilla Coke, Fanta Raspberry, Mount Franklin Spring Water, Biscoff Shake, Bubblegum Shake, Caramel Shake, Strawberry Shake, Orange Juice, and Cherry Apple Juice. We have some frozen drinks with Bursties, which come in a few different flavors. We have a Frozen Fanta and Grape, Frozen Fanta Sour Watermelon, Frozen Fanta Mango, and Frozen Fanta Raspberry. There's also an option to add Bursties to the frozen drinks. They come in these flavors. Our spiders come in a Frozen Fanta Grape Spider, Frozen Fanta Sour Watermelon Spider, a Frozen Fanta Mango Spider, a Frozen Fanta Raspberry Spider, and a Frozen Coke Spider. I'm gonna go with the Raspberry Spider. That's one thing I love about Hungry Jack's. Their ice cream is legit. Like their ice cream is so thick. Look at that. I like that. I don't like the bursties with it. The bursties did nothing for me. It's just a pop of flavor, but there's nothing. It's just a waste, really. I think the ice, the spider tastes great just with the fan, with the raspberry Fanta. I'm sure that in America, you guys have spiders as well, mate. You probably don't call it that. I'm not a fan of the bursties. I find that a frozen Coke like this, the ice cream tastes really good with the Coke on its own. The added texture and taste of a Bursty was just useless. It was kind of a throwaway. It made it less pleasant. Jack's Cafe menu has a few options, uh, a cappuccino, a flat white, a latte, a long black, which wasn't available, a mocha, hot chocolate, chai latte, Dilma tea, Fancy, um, a mini chino and a piccolo, which weren't available, a macchiato and a short black, an ice long black, which wasn't available, a caramel fudge iced coffee, an iced chocolate, an iced mocha, and an iced chai. And for the ice drinks, there's an option to add brown sugar popping pearls. That doesn't sound good to me but I'm gonna try it anyway. It sounds like it's gonna be really, really sweet. So we're gonna try the Caramel Fudge Ice Coffee. Oh my God, I hate it. I hate that, but I ha oh. Why? Why ruin a perfectly good iced coffee with these bursties? Hungry Jacks, I really appreciate you trying to be innovative and trying to jump on that whole boba sensation that's happening. But um, you don't, don't ruin a good thing. You've got a really good thing going. Your coffees are great. Well, they're good. So for those of you who haven't heard of Hungry Jack's before, it first opened up in Perth, Australia in 1971. You see, Burger King wanted to open restaurants in Australia, but the name Burger King had already been trademarked by a local restaurant in Adelaide because Burger King actually had never trademarked it down under. A wealthy businessman, Jack Powin, acquired the rights to the Australian Burger King franchise and decided to name it Hungry Jack's. 
Hungry Jacks and Burger King actually went to court in 2001 due to Burger King wrongfully trying to terminate an agreement in 1990, which allowed Hungry Jacks to open and develop Burger King franchises in Australia. The development agreement, as it was named, meant Hungry Jacks had to open a minimum of four restaurants per year in certain parts of Australia. Burger King began working with Shell to market its own restaurant outlets in Australia in a relationship that excluded Hungry Jacks, which was not made aware of this until a year later. That was in 1995. In 1995, Burger King withdrew the approval for third-party franchises to open, which meant that Hungry Jacks could not stick to the development agreement. Eventually, Hungry Jacks actually won the battle and the judge ruled that Burger King had been breaching the contract. An agreement was made to rebrand the new Burger King restaurants in Australia into Hungry Jacks as a sole master franchise. Even though Australia is a huge country, it still doesn't have as many Hungry Jack's restaurants compared to the number of Burger King restaurants globally. There's only 452 Hungry Jack's and that is as of September, 2023. That's right. There's more than 18,700 Burger King restaurants around the world. That's 42 times more than Hungry Jack's. Texas is actually the state with the most Burger King restaurants at 583 as of September, 2023. This year, however, two of Burger King's largest franchises have filed for bankruptcy due to low sales and high costs. And Burger King announced that it will be closing a few hundred stores later this year. In August of this year, Burger King was faced with a lawsuit over the size of its Whoppers compared to what's in the menu. The lawsuit alleged that the Whopper looked 35% larger with more than double the meat in the advertisement compared to the Whopper customers actually received. In response to the claim, a spokesperson for Burger King said that patties featured in its ads are the same ones used in the Whoppers served all over this great nation. No way that's true, but moving on. I mean, the fact that Burger King sells 2.1 billion Whoppers every year tells me the advertisement's working, so... All right, it's not the same size, whatever. You ate it. Get on with your life. Hungry Jack's also faced a lawsuit in 2020 when McDonald's tried to sue over its creation of the Big Jack, which McDonald's claimed was very similar to the Big Mac. I can understand the similarities there. Both parties were expected to return to court as a, at a later date, but the Big Jack was dropped from the menu, so it seems a disagreement may have been resolved. McDonald's is definitely Hungry Jack's biggest competitor with over a thousand restaurants, but word on the street is Wendy's is going to expand in Australia, although there has been a mixed response about that entering here. McDonald's is the number one competitor against Burger King, possibly because it has more locations, about 40,000 more as of 2022, which over double the amount of Burger Kings. McDonald's has always been larger despite both chains starting around the same year in the 1950s. McDonald's is just optimized for business domination, Burger King. I can't believe there's this many Burger Kings to be honest. McDonald's is the king, they do everything right. They've always done everything right. Uh, Burger King has just been looking at McDonald's and trying to copy what they do. I'm not a big Burger King fan. I love McDonald's. Uh, McDonald's fries, way better right out the gate. Uh, the burger selection at McDonald's, way better. More convenient, better service. Yeah, I, I love Hungry Jack's. I, I recently have been consuming more Hungry Jack's than any other fast food. I like Hungry Jack's, the burgers are really good. I like the meat, I like the produce. The good thing about Hungry Jack's is you can taste the difference in the quality of meat. There's de it is definitely far more superior in the make. It's a bit more of a step up from your average cheeseburgers. I think a lot of Aussies perceive Hungry Jack's as something we grew up with. It definitely, even though it's the exact same thing as Burger King, Hungry Jack's for us resembles something that's Australian or an Australian take on American burgers and American fast food chains. Let's talk about price. In Australia, our Whopper is $9.20 Australian dollars, which is $6.03 USD. Make it a meal with medium fries and a medium Coke. It'd be $16.40 AUD or $10.75 USD. In the US, a Whopper will cost you $6.89. That makes our Whopper 2% more expensive. 
If you want to make it a meal with a, a medium drink, guj, and a medium fry, this whole thing will cost you $12.18. That's an 18% increase in price. It looks like our menu might be a little bit cheaper than the US. I think the prices at Hungry Jack's are quite reasonable. There are a lot of fast food chains around that are quite expensive for what you're getting. And I always think that the price at Hungry Jack's is really quite competitive. Yeah, you know what? 12 something for this, that seems like a pretty good deal. Um, I'm seeing all these news stories about fast food is suddenly not cheap anymore. It used to be a lot less expensive, but I still think 12 something for all this, I could definitely get full on all this. So yeah, this is a pretty good deal. We took a look at the most calorific items on Hungry Jack's menu. In Australia, this is the Grill Masters Double Cowboy Angus, coming in at 1,401 calories. However, if you got the triple cheeseburger super stunner meal, which comes with small fries, a small Coke, a mini drumstick, three chicken nuggets, that would come to 1,386 calories which is still less than the burger and with 15 calories remaining. For the US, it's the bacon king as the most calorific single menu item coming in at 1,200 calories. Let's get the rest of the stats on the screen there. If you were to get a cheeseburger meal with a small fry and small drink, Coke, and a four piece nugget and a soft serve cone, that's only 86 calories more than just this bacon king. Unfortunately, U.S. Burger King does not disclose its ingredients, online or off. However, the Hungry Jack's website does have a full list of ingredients, and we found some pretty interesting stuff. The cheese in the plant-based Whopper isn't actually fully vegetarian, as it contains products derived from cows. More specifically, it contains calves rennet, which is a type of lining of the stomach. And there's a type of enzyme commonly used in a lot of cheeses to help separate the curds and whey in the cheese making process. Liars, we trusted you. So if you actually want to avoid animal products, be sure to specify vegan Whopper when you order, not just a plant-based Whopper. A lot of ingredients like to use big scientific names, which sound a little scary, such as tocopherolo. I can't even say that. Tocopherol, tocopherol. But this is just another word for vitamin E. Why not just say that? And it is found in foods such as vegetable oils, nuts, and leafy greens. And we also found in barbecue sauce, there's Rochester sauce. I didn't even know what a Rochester sauce is. I know what a Rottweiler is, and that's a dog. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out the biggest differences between Domino's in the US and in Australia. This is Food Wars. In Australia, Domino's pizza comes in three sizes. A mini, which is seven inches, and that's four slices. A large, which is 10 inches, and that is eight slices and an extra large, which is 12.5 inches, and that's eight slices. Our Domino's pizza come in four sizes. The small, which is 10 inches, the medium, 12 inches, the large, 14 inches, and the extra large, 16 inches. Our small is three inches larger than the Australian small, so that's a 43% width increase. To put that in more perspective, our small and Australia's large is the exact same size, 10 inches. That is hilarious. That's not very surprising to me. Our extra large is 3.5 inches wider or 28% bigger, 28%. Let's move on to surface area. Here's the surface area of each of these pizzas in the US. And here's the surface area for each pizza size in Australia. So, Although the inch sizes for the pizzas are pretty close, the surface area paints more of an accurate picture of their size. For instance, in Australia, the difference between a large and an extra large pizza is only two and a half inches, which doesn't seem like a lot, but the extra large pizza actually gives you 56% more pizza than the large. That's a huge difference. So in the US, the difference between the small and the medium Width-wise, there's only two inches, right? 
but if you upgrade that size, you're actually getting 44% more pizza. And as mentioned before, there's a 28% diameter difference between our XL Large and Australia's XL Large. So, for all the math heads watching, that's 63.8% more pizza in the US than in Australia. That is a, I salute this pizza. That pizza should be on our flag. Here's everything you can find at an Australian Domino's that you can't find in the US. And here's everything at a US Domino's. You are not fun in Australia. We have five types of crust. A classic, and then we have the deep pan. Now this is something that I could get around. Look at that. And then we have a thin and crispy. Ah, uh, what's the point, really? Then we have the gluten-free sourdough. This it looks like a very good alternative. It would be a delicious pizza. And then we have a cheesy crust. Now this is amazing. Look at that cheese inside it, just melting out. Is that not a, a vision? Five crust options you can get here at Domino's in the United States, starting down here. Oh, I got a stretch. No. People who are have gluten intolerance or allergy, you can get a pizza. It's small only. And Domino's is basically being like, you're by yourself. Gluten free crust. Uh, that's okay, I guess. Behold, the crunchy thin crust that you can totally bend. <laughs> Look at this. It's pretty soggy. It's more chewy than it is crunchy, but this pizza's been sitting for a minute, so we'll forgive them. The pan, you like your pizza sitting on top of a loaf of bread. We saw this guy before, the hand toss, the classic. I know it looks flat, but come on, I said, like, this is, this is the classic pizza. This is what you think of when you're thinking pizza, this exact thickness. I like how it's not floppy. Did you notice that? Look at that. That's perpendicular. Then down here, Australia, I gotta tell you about something we have here in the United States called the Brooklyn style crust. What is meant to be the Brooklyn style crust? Brooklyn is a borough in New York City. And it is a place that has fantastic pizza. All of New York does. New York's kind of uh, snooty about their pizza, but hey, I lived there for a while and the pizza there is actually pretty fantastic. This is what you would expect to get a slice of pizza in New York. You'd get a pizza slice like this. You fold it, eat it like this. I'll eat it like this. Hey, forget about it. This is the premium pizza range. Exclusive specialty pizzas in the US. This one here is called The Lot. Mm. I like The Lot. Oh, that chili flake in, in it just gives it a nice, perfect kick towards the end. The Lot is very delicious. Moving on, we have the Buffalo chicken and bacon. This is, looks pretty good. It's got like a nice cheesy sauce to it. Let's give it a go. That was yum. That was delicious. So spicier than this. If you like a spicy pizza, buffalo. And then we have the chicken and camembert. I have never had a pizza with camembert on it before. I'm not a big fan of the hollandaise sauce. I think that's how you pronounce it. Hollandaise kind of grosses me out a bit, but Let's give it a go because I do this for you guys. Do this for you. There's not much flavor to it. In comparison to the other two, this one doesn't have much flavor at all. Very plain. In no particular order. This is the Mitza, which when I can tell it's just about every meat. They just pretty much the whole meat section of the pizza prepping station all right at one. Pizza, this one we got right here, spinach and feta. Uh, and it looks pretty good, actually. I normally go for meat on the pizza, but hey, why not? Try a little spinach and feta. Hmm. Australia, there's a city in the United States called Philadelphia, AKA Philly. And they're famous for many things, including their Philly cheese stick, which is a mashed up meat and cheese and sometimes onions and peppers sandwich. At Domino's decided to take all those ingredients I put in a pizza, and I gotta say, Philly cheesesteak, sandwich form, fantastic. Pizza form? Nope. This is the extravaganza. What do we got here? We got um, sausage, pepperoni, ham, onion, mushroom, black olives, green peppers. I gotta be honest with you, man. When it comes up pizza, vegan toppings on it, 
two, maybe three max. After that, flavors are just fighting. There better be a good reason for going over three toppings. And this one, I don't think it's a good reason. I think they just thought it'd be fun to put everything on a pizza. I don't think it's fun. Moving on, we have the Loaded Supreme. This is loaded. I don't even know how they managed to fit all of this, these toppings onto this tiny little slice of dough. And then we have the garlic prawn. Got cheese, prawns, and that's basil on the bottom. A lot of cheese. That's bomb. Thick, nice, juicy cheese. Put more garlic on it, but for a standard garlic prawn pizza, yum. Then we have our four cheeses. This looks very cheesy. Peri Peri chicken is really popular here. Pretty sure it's popular all around the world. Um, not too, I'm not too sure if Americans like Peri Peri chicken, but Peri Peri chicken in Australia is very, very popular. Look at that chicken. Peri Peri chicken does exist in the United States. It's just not that popular. The sauce is becoming a little more popular. Apparently Trader Joe's just launched their own sauce, correct? So it's not as ubiquitous as it is in the UK and now I'm assuming Australia. I certainly have never seen a Peri Peri chicken pizza in the US. Next, we have our mega meat lovers. That is a lot of meat. I can understand why they would call you a mega meat lover. Not just a regular meat lover because I think there's like four pieces of meat on this. Intimidating, but let's give it a go. I'm not a meat lover's person. And last but not least, the barbecue chicken and rasha bacon. You've got some bacon, you've got some cheese, you've got some chicken, and you've got some little barbecue sauce. This is the Memphis barbecue chicken pizza. So we got bacon, we got chicken, and they have barbecue sauce instead of pizza sauce. Forget about it. Yeah, barbecue sauce, bacon, chicken. I need three. Great. Wisconsin five cheese. Wisconsin is a state in America that's known for exporting a lot of cheese to the rest of the country. So five or seven? Six. I've been saying five this whole time. What a dummy. Six is uh, too many. You can't taste all six. It just tastes like a cheese pizza. I believe this is the Chicken Kelly Bacon Ranch. Chicken, sun-dried tomatoes, ranch instead of the pizza sauce. That's hilarious. Probably some bacon. I'm not considering the ranch because it's a sauce as a topping. So again, a three. This is good. I'm not a big ranch guy, but this is pretty good. Yeah. I feel like I should reach out to my union rep because I don't know if I should eat this. So you guys know what buffalo wings are, right? This is a pizza with chicken and it's smothered in the buffalo sauce. Come on, man. I can barely taste the chicken. It's just weird and off-putting and doesn't taste very good. This one is the Pacific Veggie Pizza. You really get in on that one. This right here is the deluxe. Anyone watching in the comments, I'm asking you to generally explain to me why you get this much on your pizza. I know you like this many things. I know, I do too. But all together, it becomes a flavor mess. You got pepperoni on this one and mushrooms and onions and green peppers and sausage. No, no. And then we have our traditional pizzas, starting with the butter chicken. I love butter chicken, so I really want to give this a try. It doesn't look all what I expect it to look, but yeah. It's got like some jalapenos, some capsicum, a little light dressing over it, onions, and then mushrooms. I can see how they would call it butter chicken. See that sauce that's just there? It's like a orangey glaze almost. That would be the only reason why it's giving you the butter chicken flavor. But apart from that, would I order it for myself? No, I just would prefer just eating my butter chicken the normal way. And then we have our creamy chicken and mushroom. So this has like a thick layer of cheese on it and then some mushrooms and then the chicken, which looks orange. Uh-uh. That there was too thick cheese, like it was too creamy. It's like I'm biting into a potato that is a bit off. Thirdly, we have our spicy pepper paneer. 
got an another kind of orange glaze sauce over it, some cheese, jalapenos. I like that. Somehow I don't think that's a true representation of what a paneer is supposed to taste like. Um, it's spicy. Whoa. It's really spicy. Moving on, we have the, the Supreme Controversial. Whoa. It's got pineapple on pizza. And then you have some bacon, got some ground beef. You've got some little like, Italian sausages. And then you have your double bacon cheeseburger. That's a lot of bacon and a lot of meat. What a fun coincidence. The two specialty pizzas that we had to do separately from the rest are actually the two that I probably would usually get. Starting here, pepperoni lovers. I mean, I don't know how much you get in a regular pepperoni pizza, but with this one, I guess they packed it on there. This seems like a regular amount for pepperoni, right? I worked at a pizza place in college called Da Vinci's. And when someone get a pepperoni pizza, we no joke, covered the whole thing with pepperoni. Like starting from the center, like uh, it was a whole layer of pepperoni. I had to do it by hand, spiraling out, and then the cheese. It was very popular. That was a lot of pepperoni. This is like whatever. And this one over here is a Hana Lulu Hawaii, which is Domino's version of Hawaiian pizza, which of course has pineapple, ham, bacon, and green peppers. Domino's, look at me. Look into my eyes. Hawaiian pizza does not need green peppers. And I would argue it doesn't need bacon either, but fine. Just one too many. I, I don't know what, who you think you're, you're making happy by adding green peppers onto this thing. Yeah. I do enjoy pineapple on pizza. I know everyone thinks that they're being funny or clever by repeating all the memes and jokes about pineapples that belong on a pizza. I think it absolutely does, and I think it's delicious. I love it. So this is a capriciosa, and then you have some olives, some anchovies, mushroom, and... Um, I like anchovies, I really do. So let's give this a go and see how it tastes. Mm, mm, mm. Salty and delicious. And I know a lot of people don't like anchovies, but they're bloody great. Moving on, we have our chicken supreme. So that has chicken, it has mushrooms, a bit of if you can see there, it's got like a little bit of pineapple and then we have a Vegorama. Now I have to say, I don't normally opt for vegetarian options just because I do like meat. However, this looks really appealing. I think this is my favorite out of the bunch. This one is a winner, a winner in my opinion. Good job, Domino's. You've done an awesome vegetarian option. And then we have our barbecue meat lovers. So you've just got some meat, some cheese. You've got some pepperonis underneath and barbecue sauce. A little, little bit of barbecue sauce at the bottom. I bet you thought we were done, but we're not finished yet. We also have a value range, which comes in our large or mini sizes. So starting off, Pretty strong, we have our spicy lovers. Look at that, jalapeno, some onion, cheese, a little bit of pepperoni. I wanna give this a go because I need to know how spicy it really is. When someone says, oh, it's spicy, is it though? Is it? I think I finished them of chili. They weren't plain. One thing I can say for certain is when you go to Domino's and they say, it's a spicy, they're not lying. Now moving on, we have our pepperoni pizza and then we have our ham and cheese and then we have our simply cheese and moving on, we have our margarita. Once again, standard. We all know what a margarita pizza tastes like. We all know what it kind of looks like. This pizza seems like it's been packed on with enough cheese that would make me happy. And now our value max range. We have our double beef and onion, which has twice the amount of beef, I guess. And you've got some onion in there, some cheese, and some sauce on the back, barbecue sauce, I presume. Then we have our godfather. However, they didn't give it to us. On the day of Food Wars, you didn't give us our pizza. Marlon Brando would be so ashamed right now. He would also probably persecute me for that really impersonation of him, but 
apologies, Marlon didn't mean it. And then we have our three meats in a mini. So it's three meats, you've got your Italian sausage, you have your pepperoni, and you have your ground beef with a bit of cheese. And then we have our spicy veg supreme. You've got your jalapenos, you've got your capsicum, you have onions, you have mushrooms and cheese and tomato. This is stacked with a lot. I love looking at pizzas like this. Like when I see them so full, it just makes me so happy. And now we have our loaded pepperoni. It has 50% more pepperoni. So let's compare it to the normal pepperoni. Disregard the fact that this is significantly smaller, but look at that. We also have a few vegan and plant-based options. We have the Impossible Double Beef and Onion. We have the Impossible Supreme. We also have the Impossible Godfather. I don't think Marlon Brando would be that impressed if he got this as a pizza. He'd be like, you literally, it is a shame that you think of me like that as a pizza. We have the Vegan Spicy Veg Supreme. This is packed with veggies. Look at that. You've got some jalapenos, you've got some pineapple, and then you have some chili flakes. Now we have the vegan margarita, and I'm sorry, but I need to make a comment. Look at the cheese on this. It hasn't even melted. That is so strange to me because the fact that this has been cooked in an oven and the cheese has stayed this way. I've had bad experiences with vegan cheese in the past where I'm like, oh, it tastes a bit plasticky, so I, I wanna know what this tastes like. You ruined a vegan margarita. How could you do that? I don't like the cheese. I couldn't even taste the tomato flavor. Like, I, I, I just don't think this works. Maybe use a better vegan cheese, if that even exists. Does it exist? Because I'm yet to find one that I personally like. So just weeks after launching the plant-based meat range of its pizzas, half of Domino's stores had sold out of it. Given that plant-based items have a permanent spot on the menu, it seems that they've been well-received. If you're not satisfied with all of the pizza options, Australia Domino's also allows you to have half and half pizza. So with any two flavors and any crust in a large or an extra large pizza. Plus, you can also build your own with up to four toppings. This is what a half and half pizza looks like in Australia. So the half and half style of pizza is not on the Domino's menu, but when you go to make your own customizable pizza, one of the many 34 million, you have the option to do half and half for the topping. So you can do it on your own. Here's another menu hack. You can pick any one of the specialty pizzas we've shown to you here today, and you can swap out two ingredients for free. Aside from pizza, Domino's in Australia also sells pasta. We have the lot. It's got everything. I've never tried a Domino's pasta before and it's low-key freaking me out a bit. I don't like it. It needs more sauce on the pasta. We have the Simply Mac and Cheese pasta. I love a good mac and cheese and I know in America you guys love your mac and cheese. Not the best mac and cheese, but it's decent. And then we have our chicken and bacon pasta. So that just has a ton of bacon scattered throughout. Some chicken pieces through it as well. Onions. I like this. But in saying that, I don't think I'm ever going to go to Domino's and probably want a pasta. Now we have our Vegorama pasta. This is packed with a lot of taste. And now we have our buffalo chicken and bacon pasta. Look at all that cheese just sliding down. Uh -uh. Now we have our Simply Bacon Mac and Cheese. And then the Meat Lovers pasta. And then we have the Fire Breather pasta. Now you know I'm gonna have to try this because I do love my spice. Didn't defeat me this time, Domino's. Didn't defeat me this time. Domino's pastas. I do not like these. I've never liked these. These look absolutely terrible. I don't know why you're getting pasta at a Domino's pizza, but let's see. Down here, we got the chicken Alfredo. I'll try a bite. <laughs> the universe doesn't want me to eat this. No, bad. Italian. Sausage, marinara, 
And you just see like the like the grease just pooling in this thing. It just looks so rough. Ugh. Is that the is that the sausage that they use for the pizza? That is weird. Chicken carbonara. Man, I see some bacon in here. And pasta primavera. I've been informed this is like a veggie pasta. If you pasta lovers don't feel insulted enough, you can also build your own pasta. And with that, you can take any ingredient or topping they got in the building and they'll put it in a pasta for you. We wanted to test the limits of what they would let us put in here. So we got one that has pepperoni, banana peppers, and my favorite, pineapple. And of course, all in an Alfredo base. Oh, you know what? Actually, no way, yeah, it's bad. And the banana pepper is actually surprisingly what's screwing it up the most, not the pineapple. I do not like it. Stop. Domino's has sandwiches. Starting down here, this is the Philly cheesesteak. I took the Philly cheesesteak, made into a pizza, then took that pizza and made it into a sandwich. I'm sorry, Philadelphia. This is the Italian sandwich. And I took some meats and some cheeses and baked in. The bread's like really like thick. Come on, see. A lot of bread. Don't bother with this. And the chicken habanero, I want to see how spicy this would get, right? Domino's, your sandwiches are not good. Your pizza's fantastic. Enough with the sandwiches. The pasta, that's got to go to. They also have salads at Domino's. I don't know who the hell's getting a salad at Domino's. I mean, did we really have to take something supposed to be healthy and just put it in this plastic container that will outlive us all? Never had it, never will. You can also get a Caesar salad. Besides these sandwiches and salads, these are the other sandwiches and salads you can get at a Domino's in the United States. In Australia, we have some chicken options. We have the Southern Fried Chicken Bites, and there's 20 in a piece. Looks like popcorn chicken to me. Just like a stale nugget. And then, moving on, we have the Chicken Mini Meatballs, and there's 15 pieces of that in it. So that has some cheese glazed over it. The meatball on its own, is, it's all right. The parmesan and garlic was really, really strong. It also comes in barbecue sauce, which would probably taste a little bit better. And then we have our buttermilk chicken pieces, and there's four pieces of chicken in that. Now to move on to the fun stuff though, because we all like a good wing. Our seasoned chicken wings come in a five piece or a 10 piece. And the flavors that we have are the Frank's Red Hot Buffalo Chicken Wings. And then we have our Hickory Barbecue Chicken Wings. And now we have the Garlic Parmesan Chicken Wings. And last but not least, we have our Oven Roasted Chicken Wings. So this is just plain chicken wings. I want to give this a bit of a nibble because I want to know just what a chicken wing that they do without any flavoring tastes like. I know you're probably thinking a chicken wing without really much seasoning is boring, but this is a good baseline. So I feel like if the baseline's really good, then all the other flavors you can't go wrong with. Domino's Australia also does a value chicken mega box, which has 50 pieces, but we obviously didn't get that because we don't want Domino's chicken. Specialty chicken bites. We got two of the four options here. What are specialty chicken bites? They take these Little like nugget chicken bite things here, you like you see that, and they lay it down on a thing of, I don't know, cheese or whatever. So I think you like, all kind of stuck together. And these are burnt. I think these are supposed to be barbecue. They have chickens, they have ovens. They're just like to stick it in the oven. We'll see what comes out. I'm gonna assume it's like the tomato one, the tomato ranch maybe. Crispy bacon tomato. These taste all right. They're not amazing, but they're not bad. If they were presented to me, I would eat them. It seems like a weird thing to get, especially because they have wings. Here's two of the wing options you can get. I believe there's four or five. Um, I think I got garlic parmesan right here, right? Yep. Good. The buffalo wings, lots of sauce. And even if you want to get wings, but you want to have boneless wings, you got that too. Check it out, boneless wings, which are pretty much bigger versions of the chicken bites. It's all very like these subtle variations of the same thing. Chunks of chicken with sauce on it. You can also get these varieties above me. On to the sides. We got carbs, 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 and dishes of cheese. Oh my. Starting down here, there are three 
different tater tot variations you can get. Looks like these are made just like the chicken bites or chicken chunks, whatever you want to call them. We have the melty three cheese tater tots, the Philly cheesesteak tater tots, Domino's, why do you hate Philadelphia so much? And then we have the cheddar bacon bites. This, I mean, this looks like something I would microwave when I'm high. I don't know what I'm like doing, like, oh, oh, put cheese on and bacon and stuff. Like, what? Oh yeah, those are terrible. We have stuffed breads. Here's two of the ones you can get. Apparently there is pepperoni inside of this. Yeah, look at that. Oh. Nope. And then another version of that one, this one, which looks like it has what? Yep, jalapenos and ham in it. You can also get these varieties. The Parmesan twists. Here they are here. Breads that are twist and Parmesan. Oh, look. And Parmesan bread bites. A little fun bite. These are all bad. These are all bad, everybody. It's so greasy and like sick and doughy. You know to make these a lot easier to eat? is a dish of cheese. Luckily, Domino's has you covered. We get dips. They got these two dips here, a cheese dip and a cheese and marinara dip. This is basically just melted cheese and melted cheese and marinara sauce. Oh, it's, uh, What am I supposed to do with this? Oh, I'm getting a headache. And in Oz, these are our exclusive sides. We have cheese and garlic scrolls. But it doesn't look like there'd be too much cheese in that. It's a bit more doughy than cheese. You guys don't have garlic bread? I feel like garlic bread is just like a given when you go to a pizza shop. That's what our garlic bread looks like. Now we have our cheesy garlic bread. Cause if normal garlic bread isn't enough down under, they want to add the cheese on it. So that's just packed with cheese. And then a layer of butter underneath with the garlic. And then we have the vegan cheesy garlic bread. I mean, can you tell? Vegans, you need to stand up for your rights. You need to start fighting for better cheese. You need to start having some protests around the street because this isn't good enough for you. This isn't good enough. I wouldn't stand for it. And then we have our crispy chips with Domino's pizza salt. It looks like a, a mixture. I really, I'm gonna try this because I wanna know, is it like a chicken salt? It's just a bunch of herbs. It's that time of the video. Sauce talk. Sauce talk. These are the exclusive sauces you can get in the US you can't get in Australia. Starting down here, hot buffalo sauce. You saw that one pizza was drenched in it. Here it is. This next one, sweet mango habanero. That's a good sauce. Oh, got a little bit of a kick to it. Yeah, honey barbecue. Yeah, you know, standard. And of course, it wouldn't have been an American restaurant without its ranch. People love it here. Blue cheese, also good for dipping the wings. Garlic flavored sauce. Weird how it doesn't say it's garlic sauce. Do you notice that? Garlic flavored with artificial flavors. I see why now. Is there any garlic in this? Oh, look at this. Yeah, ugh, very garlicky. And of course you can get a marinara sauce for, I don't know if you want more sauce on your pizza. Maybe it's also good for dipping those ridiculous breads you saw earlier. And if you're getting yourself a salad, we got Caesar dressing right here, boy. Look at that. And sweet icing, which is for the desserts. Well, you will see in a moment. Here are all the sauces that are exclusive to Australia. There's a spicy sriracha mayo, which I'm pretty sad about because I really wanted to try that one. Sriracha is really popular in Australia, so sriracha mayo would have been delish. But let's try the sweet and sour. What better way to try our sauce than with a slice of cheese pizza? Let's dip this in. I like it, it's just like a classic sweet and sour. And then we have the creamy garlic aioli. Aioli is so popular here. It's like your ranch dressing, basically. Aioli's good, they all pass the test. Poof, the desserts, all right. Down here is cinnamon sticks, which I'm assuming this icing is for. More twisties, can't get away from them. Yeah. Oh man. This is really good. I don't think I've actually had these before, Yuli. Chocolate lava crunch cakes. 
Look at that, got some gooey stuff in this. No, oh, I mean, that's so gooey. Mm, maybe it's the gooey when it's hot. It's been sitting for a while. They have solidified. And then we have the marble cookie brownie. Cookies in brownies. All right. It's a brownie, it's great. You can't complain about that, right? I'm getting crazy. <laughs> it's very good. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, wait, I'm making a, making a video right now. Sorry, I forgot. It's really good. Wow. And these are our dessert options. Starting off, we have our hot chalk fudge brownies as a six piece or a family share brownie, which is 18 pieces with two chocolate dipping sauces. These look really good. Let's try the way it was designed to be consumed. Oh my God, this is amazing. Then we have our Chop Lava Puff Roll. So it's got like, they've packed this with chocolate inside it, like in a pastry. It's not bad, but it doesn't have as much flavor as that does. And then we have our Chop Lava Cake. I really want to try this and see how much chocolate lava is inside. I recall it being more lavery than that. It reminds me of cake batter, like before you cook the chocolate cake. Moving on, we have our triple choc brownie. I guess it's just like the other choc fudge brownie, but triple the choc. And we have churros. Where they come in a four piece or a 12 piece. They've given us some dipping sauce as well for that. That's a good churro. And now we have our mini Dutch pancakes. They are so cute. They've got a sugary coating over them as well. And now we have our salted caramel mousse. They've got a pretty extensive and good dessert range. No, I didn't really fancy that. It's it's not really, a, it doesn't even taste like salted caramel, it tastes more like chocolate. So this is our drink menu. We have a Red Bull, we have Red Bull Sugar Free, we have Pepsi, Pepsi Max, 7up, Mountain Dew, Sunkiss, Solo, Bottle of Water, Malted Vanilla Thick Shake, you can have with or without cream, and a Salted Caramel Thick Shake with or without cream. I want to try a salted caramel thick shake. I can't get it through the straw, it's that thick. That is a really good salted caramel thick shake. It's delicious. And finishing up the exclusives, these are the exclusive drinks you can get in the US. Starting down here, you can get Coca-Cola and of course Diet Coke. We got Sprite, we got Dasani water, and we have Fanta and Dr. Pepper. And for some reason they gave us the two liters. We also have two liters. <laughs> Here's the price per square inch for each sized pizza in Australia. You can see there's not much difference at all in price. It seems the bigger the pizza you get, the more money you essentially save, even if it's a few cents. Displayed on screen, you'll see the US cheese pizza size priced per square inch. It's the same in the US, differences are minor, and the only thing you're saving is a few cents per square inch if you get the extra large compared to getting the large. Domino's is an American pizza company started back in 1960 when two brothers, Tom and James Monahan, bought a pizza place called Dominic's in Michigan. Fun fact, the three dots on the Domino's logo are for the original three stores in Michigan. The owners intended to add a new dot for every new store that was acquired, but after 12 restaurants, how would that have worked? Domino's has been in Australia since 1983, with the first store opening in Queensland. Today, Domino's Pizza Enterprises is the biggest pizza franchise in Australia in terms of sales and number of stores. It's Domino's Inc.'s largest franchisee outside of the US. Franchise agreements are complicated, but the main takeaway here is that Domino's was so successful in Australia that the Australian arm of the company has now grown to represent a huge chunk of Domino's global businesses. Well, you may have noticed as Domino's actually dropped the word pizza from its logo in 2012. That's because the fast food chain now offers more than just pizza, unfortunately. They also got pastas, sandwiches, and those weird bite things. Anyway, many customers associate Domino's with its speedy delivery service of under 30 minutes, which is a huge selling point. 
Domino's states that it delivers 1.5 million pizzas every day across the globe, or 1,041 pizzas per minute. We can beat that. Domino's Australia offers a 20 minute delivery time. Yeah, it does. It uses an algorithm which checks out how busy the store is. And if your order is within a certain distance, you can then pay a small fee for the delivery. And if they fail to do so, you'll get a free pizza voucher. In 2012, Domino's Australia set a world record by the most pizzas made in 60 minutes by a team. They had a target of 500 pizzas to beat and managed to achieve that in 32 minutes. And in an hour, they made 837 pizzas. Got any world records in America, Joe? We actually do. In 2010, at a Domino's store in Ohio, a guy named Brian Edler made 206 pizzas in one hour. That's 3.4 pizzas a minute. To be honest, until Papa John's came around, it was always seemed like either Domino's or Pizza Hut, either depending where you live or what you grew up and your parents were normally getting. In terms of rivals, um, I would say that Domino's biggest rival is Pizza Hut. I feel like this has been like a long standing war between the two. Domino's is definitely um, a type of pizza that a lot of Aussies would get if they are in a hurry, they don't have time to think about what the next meal is gonna be. It's quick, it's fast, and they know it's gonna taste good. I do applaud though the effort that Domino's is going to to try new things and to accommodate different palates, especially because we live in such a multicultural and diverse country like Australia, like there's people from all over the world live here. So I think that that's really an inclusive thing that they're doing. So I think it's great. Um, there are some pizzas in my opinion that I think they did really well at and others that I'm like, look, it's not the worst. Like the butter chicken wasn't the worst pizza, but it wasn't the best. I mean, I, outside of pizza, Domino's, you're doing a terrible job adapting whatever you think you're adapting. I personally can't stand anything outside of the pizzas. I don't know if they're incorporating American culture into it, but they certainly went after Italian culture, and I'm sorry, Italians. This is an extra large 12 and a half inch pepperoni pizza with a classic crust. For the whole pizza, it has 1,080 calories or 135 calories per slice. That's 52 grams. Here's the rest of the nutritional information for the whole pizza. This is not a US large 14 inch pepperoni pizza with the hand tossed crust. Sorry, we didn't get the large, we got the medium. Imagine this was this much bigger, thank you. For the whole pizza, it's 2,400 calories or 300 calories per slice. Here are the rest of the nutritional information for this pizza. Whilst our pepperoni pizza has less calories, fat and carbs, ours does have a lot more sodium. Unfortunately, Domino's Australia doesn't provide the ingredients on its website. We did get in contact and we were informed that some of the ingredients are bespoke to Domino's due to intellectual property. Hmm, suspicious. They must have some sort of secret ingredient that they don't want the rest of the world to know about. E472 is a food additive. It's also called glycodelta lactone and derives from glucose. It's commonly used in feta cheese as it can add a tanginess to foods so we assume that this is used in the cheese part of the pizza. E516 is a calcium sulfate, better known as gypsum. It's a natural mineral form and its main use is for plaster of Paris and stucco. The FDA approves its use in food to improve this ability and act as a thickener. In the US, Domino's does provide an extensive list of ingredients. Here is a list of all the ingredients in the hand-tossed pizza dough. And the ingredients of all the pizza cheese. Domino's at US uses part skim mozzarella cheese, which has a lower moisture content, therefore a longer shelf life, which is better for the pizza toppings. It also allows for the cheese to brown more when cooking and can stretch further, which means better cheese pulls. Some of those ingredients Domino's used did seem a little suspicious, so we thought we'd do some digging. TBHQ is present in some of the oils that Domino's US uses. Its primary use is to prevent oxidation, which can cause food to lose their flavor and color. While the EU and FDA have deemed this safe to consume under the concentration allowance, there have been studies that show that prolonged exposure of a very high dose of TBHQ can be carcinogenic, specifically stomach tumors. Oh. The FDA says the food's TBHQ content should not account for more than 0.02% of the food's total fat and oil content. Ferris gluconate 
at a stabilized color, but it's also used in treatment for iron deficiencies. Natamycin and sodium proponiate are natural mold inhibitors for food such as sausage on the pizza. I'm never saying another chemical I can't pronounce ever again. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out the differences between KFC in Australia and in the US. This is Food Wars. Let's start with the original recipe chicken. In Australia, our chicken comes in three sizes. One piece on its own, a three piece box meal, or a six piece box meal. In the US, our KFC chicken comes in seven sizes. Starting with these four, you can get a single piece, obviously a la carte. Then we have three combos, a two piece, which comes with a side and a biscuit, a three piece that also comes with a side and a biscuit, and a four piece combo. Guys, you're not gonna believe this. Also comes with a side and this thing right here, which we're calling a biscuit. With all these combos, you can get yourself a medium drink. Onto the buckets, baby. I'm holding the eight piece buckets, but you can also get a 12 piece and a 16 piece. Now who wants to see what's inside these buckets? Jeez Louise. What's the place? Grease. <laughs> We have a 10 piece, which is part of the family feast. So you can pick four sides of your choice. And that also includes a 1.25 liter drink. And then wait for it. We have a 21 piece. Yeah, this is the biggest bucket. It's bigger than the US. I can't believe this. We're finally winning something. The difference between the largest US bucket and the largest Australian bucket is 31% more chicken. Oh, look at all that chicken. Are you jealous? I... I'm surprised we cap at 16, right? We would have coasted to 40 easily, but apparently 16 is our ceiling. So 21, I am impressed, Australia. Brittany, I am impressed. On to nuggets, which come in two sizes. You can get a six piece or a 10 piece of nuggets. They gave us a box combined with both. So we're gonna count it out and make sure that they didn't rip us off. Two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, and ten. We have nuggets in four sizes, starting down here a five piece. They move up to an eight piece and a 12 piece. Both can be combos. Graphics can go ahead and get a side and a drink on the screen, please. Thank you. And then our biggest size is the 36 piece nugget. Plate, please. I don't know why we have the nuggets and not the popcorn chicken. What happened? But uh, I tell you with the popcorn chicken later, so. But anyway, uh, so yeah, that's 35 piece. Oh, it's just so good. The nuggets are so good. Okay, we're gonna move on. I'm gonna eat that whole plate. So Australia might have the bigger chicken bucket, but we have the biggest nugget bucket. 260% bigger to be exact. Our fries, or chips, as we like to call them in Australia, come in two sizes, a regular and large. For a regular box of fries, it is 95 grams. According to the website, it was supposed to be 120 grams for a regular fries. Why do they keep on ripping us off with fries in Australia? Now to weigh the large fries. So they are weighing in at 206 grams. They should be 240. America, I hope your KFC is a bit more honest. In the US, our KFC fries come in two sizes, individual and family. Let's weigh them both. The individual, 93 grams. And of course, the big boy, ready? <laughs> Never get sick of that. Family size fries, 220 grams. That's a lot of fries. Uh, mash and gravy, individual and large. Ours came not mixed. If anyone watching wants to figure out how much plastic is used here and what it weighs and then send it to us and we will update the video somehow. No, we won't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Our smaller mashed potato size with container, 151 grams. Let's make a mess. 500, 510, 515. 525, oh my God, 530, 540, 550, 568, 570. Oh my God, I think we're going to 600. 
Uh, 601, 602, 603, wait, 603 grams. That was exciting, guys. Our regular gravy comes in at 106 grams and our large gravy comes in at 523 grams. Let's see if there's any differences between the original chicken sandwiches. So our original chicken sandwich is coming in at 170 grams. 261 grams for the US KFC chicken sandwich. Wait, theirs was 170? And ours is 261? Ooh, Australia, you guys are getting gouged. In Australia, KFC opts to give customers sealed drinks rather than from a fountain. These come in three different sizes, a 375 milliliter can, a 600 ml bottle, or a 1.25 liter bottle. The 1.25 liter bottle is more of a sharing option. I mean, unless you're really thirsty. Our fountain drinks come in two sizes, the 20 ounce, which is a regular, and the large, which is 30 ounces of soda. Not big enough, you say? I agree. You can also get this. Yeah, ba boom A 64 fluid ounce bag, jug. I don't know where jug ends and bag begins, but this is straddling that very line. 64 ounces of your drink of choice. This is 51.4% bigger than Australia's largest drink. Suck it, Australia. We're getting our thirst quenched here in the US. Oh God, I swallowed something. I think there was a fly in here. <laughs> Still good. <laughs> this is all the food that you can get from an Australian KFC that you can't find in the US. It's a lot. Here is everything at a US KFC you can't get in Australia. Let's start with some chicken. Australian fried chicken comes in a few different ways, which can all come on their own or as a combo. We've got the original fillet piece, the zinger fillet piece, or the three hot and crispy boneless tenders. The zinger is very popular in Australia and it is very delicious and I love the crumbs on the outside. It's a little bit spicy, but not, not really that spicy at all. Uh-uh, uh, not good. It's really fatty. I'm gonna try the tenders instead. Please let this be better. Yeah, oh my God. Tender and a bit spicy, but not too much of a kick. It's like a subtle kick. This is so much better. Yum. In America, you can get your fried chicken in four different styles. Extra crispy, which is my favorite. The original, which you've been watching this whole video. And in some parts of this country, you can also get your chicken grilled or hot and spicy. But not here in Los Angeles. What is wimpy chicken? I'm telling you, this should be regular and this should be like diet. Unfortunately, KFC in America has discontinued the wings. That's very sad for that to happen. No more wings in KFC. Australia has a similar option, but they're called Wicked Wings which you can get as a three piece, a six piece, or a 10 piece. I think they're called Wicked Wings because they have this spicy marinade under the crumb, but I wanna make sure that they're not lying to us. So let's peel it back and see if there's a marinade behind it. Oh yeah, like a dark brown marinade. Oh my God, yum. The chicken's really tender and it almost like falls off the bone. I don't think it deserves the name of like Wicked, because it's wickedly spicy, but I, I think it's wickedly delicious. Australia has popcorn chicken. I know Joe was sad when this was discontinued from the US menu, but here in Australia, it's pretty iconic. It comes in three different sizes. It comes in a snack size, a regular size, and a maxi size. Yes, Brittany, I am mourning the loss of popcorn chicken here in the United States. I loved it. It's gone. They do have the nuggets though, which we've seen earlier. And the nuggets and the popcorn chicken, I mean, I haven't seen them side by side, but they look pretty similar. So maybe they just streamlined their chicken chunks. I don't know. No more popcorn chicken. Rest in peace. Rest in pieces. Popcorn chicken pieces. I demand that stays in the cut. And me demanding it. 
We have a large range of chicken sandwiches in Oz. We'll start with a couple that look pretty similar to the US options. There's the original recipe burger, so that's similar to the US chicken. And then we have the Zinger burger. This has had a bit of an upgrade since 2016 and it's now a lot hotter. This is similar to the US spicy chicken sandwich, but ours has a spicy coating in the chicken and it looks crispier than the original chicken. It's definitely crispier. Once again, I wouldn't say it's spicy, subtle kick, but nothing that's mind blowing. But this is probably one of our most popular burgers here in Australia. Everyone loves a good Zinger burger. We don't have nearly as many chicken sandwiches as they have in Australia, but we have a few and they are kind of similar. For instance, our chicken sandwich, crispy chicken sandwich, we got one, but instead of lettuce, ours has pickles. Can you see it's just swimming in mayonnaise? Anyone see that movie Saltburn? Never mind. And then also we have a spicy chicken sandwich, which of course has the spicy sauce. And I think pickles. And this little guy over here is the Chicken Little, which is just a chicken tender sandwich slider guy, also with pickles. Sandwich is KFC next level. Then we have some that are definitely exclusive, starting off with the double tender burger. Then we have a Zinger bacon and cheese burger, a Zinger stacker burger, a Zinger crunch burger, an original bacon and cheese burger, and last but not least, the barbecue bacon stack burger. I hear the US does not approve of bacon in the UK. So Joe, here's a close up of the bacon we have here. Joe's gonna roast us. I'm prepared. Joe, I swear bacon doesn't normally look like this. Ooh, yeah, I don't know about that bacon. Looks closer to UK bacon, which you know I do not like. I mean, it has a taste, but I don't know. On looks alone, I say, chuck it in the bin. I'm gonna try the Zinger Crunch Burger. So there's a stack of chicken, Zinger, and then coleslaw and some chips. It's good. It's an interesting combination. I like the crunch that it adds to it. I think that's actually really good, surprisingly. Yeah, I don't know. French fries and a chicken sandwich seems like a lazy add-on to make it a new exclusive sandwich. I mean, you could just put fries in any sandwich technically and make it a new sandwich. So yeah, thumbs down on that. I wouldn't want to try that. Get a good look, Brittany and the rest of Australia. This is the famous KFC Famous Bowl. Potatoes, gravy, corn, chicken nuggets now instead of popcorn chicken, and melted cheese because why not? Honestly, I think the cheese is, is, is kind of the most off-putting part about it. Like everything else, yeah, but the cheese, I don't know. I've never had one of these like outside of shooting the show. I'd probably just go for the nuggets with mash and gravy and corn. Like the, the combining it together is like, uh, I think I put a little effort into my life, right? So I would more just rather eat them separately than all smushed in this thing, but that's me. I mean, I guess this would be better if you were driving maybe. Like, yeah, I am late for work, which you're also having it for breakfast, which is strange. Also, Australia, if you're wondering, I mean, I barely cracked it. This is all mashed potatoes. This is just visually, I would go 87 to 90% mashed potatoes. So essentially what you're doing is you're getting your own mashed potatoes and there's some corn and chicken and cheese on it. Buyer beware. I would be game to try it. It looks like it would be a pretty flavorful meal. I don't know if my stomach would be able to handle it, but I would be game to try it. I gotta say, I used to rag on the pot pie. The first episode, I really ragged on the KFC pot pie. And then producer Yuli came into my life and pointed out this thing's actually pretty good. And I actually tried it and they are actually correct. It is pretty good. Yeah, I like it. It's good. Hear that? It's a crispy boy. It's good. This seems strange. The only drawback is I don't think people who are really in the mood for KFC are going there for the Popeye. I know you like a Yuli, but if you're like, want to go to KFC, it's like, let's get some chicken, let's get the chicken sandwiches. I want the mashed potatoes, the gravy, the corn, all that stuff. The Popeye, it just seems like something that, I don't know, are a lot of people getting it? It's been on the menu for a while. So it's savory, it's a savory pie, Australia. I know you guys like those, so. It's not bad. When I saw that, my mouth 
drop to the floor. It looks unreal. I would definitely be giving that a go because pies here aren't sweet. We love steak pies, chicken and like mushroom pies. So it's very savory. So when I saw your famous pot pie, I was like, I need to give this a go. So please introduce it here because that would be amazing. We're missing out. <laughs> And our last exclusive items are wraps, which are also called twisters. So we have a Zinger Crunch twister and we have our original recipe twister. So this is the Zinger twister. We have the chicken. We have some tortilla chips, some lettuce, what I presume to be coleslaw or maybe it's just shaved cabbage and then some sauce, Zinger sauce. So these also come in bowls as well. This is our original recipe bowl. You've got your chicken, you've got your tortilla chips, and then the sauce on top and the veggies. And then the zinger bowl, which is basically the same thing, just with the zinger chicken. So they're exactly the same as a twister, but without the wrap. I'm sorry, those twister bowls, absolutely not. No, no way, those look Terrible. So you took apart a sandwich and just shoved it in a bowl. I understand that people want to be healthier, so you took the, the, the stuff inside a twister wrap and put it in a bowl. This looks so depressing. Brittany, oh no. Oh, we got sides in the USA. Mac and cheese. Is mac and cheese a thing in Australia? I don't, I feel like macaroni and cheese is really American, right? Mmm. Actually, their mac and cheese kind of sucks. Sweet corn. Yeah, corny. And of course, biscuits. Australia, do you call them scones? Do you call them cookies? Crackers, what do you call them? This is a biscuit, not to be confused with the UK biscuit, and maybe what Australia calls biscuits. These are savory, buttery, fluffy, very crumbly, I don't wanna make a mess, pieces of bread that are good for meals like this because they're good for sopping up gravy, sopping up juices. Also, it's dryness really, counteracts the greasiness of the fried chicken. Definitely a must when you're having this type of Southern fried chicken cuisine. In Australia, these are our exclusive size. We have a crunchy jalapeno slaw, a dinner roll, and we also do these sliders, which are these toasted flatbreads with like three types of fillings. We have the original pepper mayo slider, the original barbecue slider, and the original supercharged slider. So this is the barbecue slider. Whoa, that is packed with sauce. So basically, it's a really soft flatbread. And then inside, it's just that chicken piece with barbecue sauce and a lot of it and a bit of lettuce. The one thing I'll say about their sides, I noticed that the sliders aside, <laughs> I do think it's funny to get a bunch of fried chicken and then be like, what do I want on the side? A small sandwich. So, all right, Australia. That's what you want to do, do it. I got sauces in front of me, so you know what that means. Audience, say it with me. Sauce talk. Sauce talk. Here are all the sauces that are exclusive to Australia. We have a creamy aioli, a sweet and smoky barbecue, a supercharged, but they ran out of that one, a sweet chili, and a sweet and sour. Oops, ate it without trying, sorry. Creamy aioli is like just standard good aioli. It's nothing special. It's good for KFC, but I'm not like praising it. Then we have the sweet and smoky barbecue. Yeah, I can smell the smoky flavors through that. It's quite strong actually. That is really good. That would make a delicious marinade on like the barbie with some chicken. I would have liked to have tried the supercharged. I don't even know what it would taste like. It doesn't give any explanation in the name, which is why it's so intriguing. I'm like, what does supercharged mean? And then we have the sweet chili. That's my favorite so far. It's a perfect amount of sweet and chili. This is the best with nuggets. I'm just gonna eat it again because it's that good. Exclusive US KFC sauces, starting down here, the KFC sauce. I have a suspicion that this is just called something different in every country, but I feel like a ketchup and a mayo and like some pepper. It's good, I like it, but you know, 
Ranch? Is ranch also not very popular in Australia? What's the ranch situation down in Australia? Love it here in America. We love our ranch in the USA. It tastes like every other ranch, because all ranch tastes the same. That's right, come at me. Also a buffalo ranch, very smart actually, very smart. Buffalo sauce, good for wings, not much else, but add a little ranch to it, cool it out. This might be my, this would maybe be my go-to. Honey barbecue, just sweeten it up. Just sweeten it up with a little bit of honey. And I'm here for it. Whoa, wait a second. Too much honey. Speaking of honey, honey mustard. Man, I was not a big honey mustard guy. Better than most honey mustards, but not like right. KFC sauce, yeah, it's like this weird, not so mystery, mystery sauce where you figure out what's in it. I mean, we had KFC in America. I don't know, try it, but it's just whatever. Ranch is whatever. Love the buffalo ranch though. But honey barbecue, mm, a little too honey, and the honey mustard. Better for honey mustards, but still just okay. On to desserts, we only have one. And this is the first time in Food Wars history we've gotten the mini one. It is the chocolate cake. I'll take the top off of it. This uh, got beat up in transit. <laughs> Sorry. So they usually have a bigger one, but I was surprised to find out they have mini ones now. Actually, <laughs> I think this was a smart idea. It's fantastic. That's a, that's a really good, it has like that, like a little bit like a spice to it, you know? Like an anise maybe, I don't know. But with the, with the, um, with the frosting, A plus on that cake. Thank you very much. I think the US takes the lead with the dessert options. We only have one sad double chocolate mousse. Not for me. But there's a smiley face on the, on the lid. But I'm not smiling, it's actually, no, no, no. It's a really bitter mousse, bitter and no, not appealing. I say bring back the Crushes milkshakes. I heard that there was a petition going around to bring them back, so fingers crossed they will make a return because this is sad and depressing. And for exclusive drinks, we have a few fountain drinks you can get here in the US. Starting down here, I believe this is the lemonade. It is fantastic. Moving out, it's something called Starry, which kind of took over for Sierra Mist. Tastes exactly like 7 Up. Yeah, it's terrible. We got sweet tea. So wonderfully sweet. I love it. And of course, Mountain Dew Sweet Lightning. What is it? It is peach flavored Mountain Dew, I guess. Oh, I love that. And you can also get an Aquafina bottle of water. Here are our exclusive drinks. We have 7 Up, Solo, Sunkissed, a bottle of water, some sparkling water. We have an orange juice, and we were supposed to have a peach Lip Lipton iced tea here, but they didn't have any left. And then we have our raspberry freeze, a Pepsi freeze, and a Mountain Dew freeze which I really want to try these freezers because I haven't and they look really, really good. I think we're going to get a sugar high from this. That's really sweet, but it's actually really good. I feel like that would be your weekly intake of sugar if you were to consume one of these. That is, that is a lot. Pepsi is better than the raspberry if you just don't want it to be too sweet. No, lemony, just like a lemon, a frozen solo almost, Mountain Dew kind of tastes like solo. Pepsi's my favorite, very, very good. Picture yourself, hot summer's day, walking past the beach. Ooh, I'm thirsty, what would I like? This, a Pepsi freeze. A Kentucky Fried Chicken, as it was known back then, came to Sydney, Australia in 1968. Then in 1991, it dropped its name to become KFC. Today, KFC is a subsidiary of Yum Brands Inc, a restaurant group, which owns about 2% of its restaurants and the remainder of the restaurants in the group are run by franchises. Together, Yum Brands and the franchises operate more than 25,000 KFC restaurants in over 145 countries. In 2018, KFC was the second largest fast food chain in Australia after McDonald's. 
and there are now 740 KFC restaurants in the country. The master franchise of KFC, Collins Food, has reported a 10% jump in revenue for the last year, taking it to over $1 billion. And the chain has stated it hopes to open more restaurants in 2024, so KFC is clearly trying to expand. There are 4,340 KFC locations in the US. That's 5.8 times or 487% more restaurants than in Australia. Chick-fil-A and Popeyes have quicker drive throughs than KFC, which is why they might be doing better. And I will say, yes, Chick-fil-A's drive through is efficient, man. You fly through that drive through at Chick-fil-A. According to CNN Business, in 2021, KFC's average drive through wait was six minutes and 30 seconds, which seems pretty long and its orders were only 88.6 accurate as of 2016. So the question is, do I wanna wait six minutes and my order's wrong? Yeah, that's not a good look, KFC. KFC even told customers just to order on the app and do quick pickup because it's faster than going through the drive-thru. KFC, I mean, you're even admitting to people like, yeah, we're taking from this drive-thru, just, just come in and get it. If I go and get KFC and it's quick, the food's hot and the order's correct, it's better than Chick-fil-A or, or Popeyes. So the only thing that's bad about KFC is I could see is that the, the food is, takes forever, therefore it's kind of cold and the order's wrong. <laughs> so, you know, just solve those problems and look at Chick-fil-A. <laughs> KFC partnered with the drone delivery service Wing to pilot the delivery of KFC food in the Queensland area of Australia. That is pretty cool, actually. Can you just imagine one day you just ordered like your food flown to you? Like it just surpasses all traffic. You don't even get stuck in it. Like Uber Eats, like no problems that you've got Uber flying to you. The drones could only carry up to 1.5 kilograms. So this did limit the amount of food being ordered. As part of a rebranding in 2006, KFC wanted to make sure even aliens knew its chickens was finger licking good. So it created a Colonel Sanders face in the desert in Nevada, not far from Area 51. It was assembled with 65,000 tiles measuring 87,500 square feet, which is bigger than St. Paul's Cathedral in London. Shout out to Harry. It was deemed the face of space and stayed there for six months. Hey, KFC. I'm clearly not gonna tell you how to do your business, but maybe absorb some of the resources you put into that stunt into uh, the drive-through and getting the orders right. That's just my uh, business advice for KFC and the Colonel. Do what you want with that. In 2019, KFC Australia launched a wedding planning service. There were only six weddings available, but the full KFC service included a KFC celebrant to make it official. What did he look like? Did he look like Colonel Sanders? Like, did he have the whole attire? I want to see photos of this, this is amazing. A KFC food truck, a photo booth, KFC chicken buckets, and even a KFC themed cake. It didn't cover the cost of transport or venue, but it did feed enough for up to 200 guests. They should definitely be bringing this back. Why did they cancel this? I wonder what that cake looks like. Like, is it just a layer of chicken? Like, is it just chicken legs? Is it actually just like a chicken cake? Or is it a cake that looks like a chicken? In 2019, KFC put forward another campaign called the Michelin Impossible to make its most remote restaurant worthy of a Michelin star. That is really ambitious. Sam Elderman was the chosen franchisee for his restaurant in Australia's Northern Territory in Alice Springs. For anyone that's watching this, Alice Springs is really, really remote. Like Google where it is. No one lives there. It's 1,600 kilometers from the nearest town. Elderman even flew to Paris to plead his case and offered people on the street fried chicken. The campaign was more about the quality of the fried chicken than being from KFC. Unfortunately, he was unsuccessful, but the campaign went viral across Australia. Now, what country is getting the better deal? Let's find out. Here is a five piece tender combo. It's got a side, five piece tender, and a drink. This in the US is 
I want to point out if we got each of these items individually, it'd be $20.22. In Australia, you can get a similar combo with five pieces of tender chicken, regular chips, a regular drink, and an aioli sauce. In Sydney, this would cost you $15.95 AUD, which would be the equivalent to $10.14 USD. If you ordered this individually, it would cost you $18.65 AUD. That would be $11.86 USD. That makes our meal 48% cheaper. I mean, I know we lose one side, but like that is really cheap. In Australia, the most expensive item on the menu is the Giant Feast, which includes 15 pieces of chicken, 18 nuggets, three large chips, two sides, and a 1.25 liter drink. All of this will cost you $47.95 AUD or $30.50 USD. We're not sure how much this feeds, but a rough guess would be five people costing around $9.59 each. Our most expensive single menu item is the 16 piece meal. 16 piece bucket of chicken, four sides, and around eight biscuits, all for $52.99. KFC suggests that this would feed seven to eight people and be roughly $6.62 per person. Yeah, right. Me and two buddies could knock this out no problem. After a night of drinking, do we would kill this seven to eight, get real. But if you wanna do the seven to eight people, fine. This is 51% cheaper on average than it would be in Australia. In case you haven't noticed, KFC really puts an emphasis on like combos and meal deals. So it appears that KFC is more expensive. When you break it down per person, it's actually cheaper. KFC's menus have become more expensive in the last year due to the cost of living increases. And I mean, that's no surprise. But some items are up by 25 cents making them more expensive than McDonald's. But overall, KFC is still one of the best value fast food chains against its biggest rivals. You can still get more for your money. We wanted to see if there were any similarities in the nutrition of KFC in both countries. Here, the nutritional content for the original recipe burger in Australia is 382 calories, which is 19%. But I actually think that's pretty low for a sandwich. Like it's nothing too extreme. If you wanted to make it into a combo with regular fries and a can of Pepsi, that would give you a total of 674 calories, which is almost double. Both countries do have a similar chicken sandwich, which is of course a crispy chicken filet, mayo, and either lettuce or pickles in a bun. The nutritional value for this chicken sandwich in the US is all of this. Want to note that 650 calories is 70% more than the same sandwich in Australia. Also, it has more fat and more sodium in both those categories is over 50% of your daily intake. This whole thing, 1,190 calories, which is 77% more than the same combo in Australia. Let's move on to the ingredients. After getting in contact with KFC Australia, they kindly sent us the ingredients of some of their menu items. Here are the ingredients for their original chicken. Here are the ingredients of our original chicken at KFC. We've noticed that our chicken actually uses two ingredients that the US doesn't use. Firstly, yeast extract is present, which is commonly used for flavorings in processed foods. It's not harmful, but it's usually high in salt, which is why the chicken tastes so good. Yeast extract can sometimes be known under other names like Marmite or here in Australia, Vegemite. Then we spotted seaweed extract in the ingredients, which seemed quite strange as it's not a fish product. It was also quite difficult to find a reason why they used it in fried chicken, but one source suggested it's used as a preservative to bind the foods together. Here are all the ingredients for the KFC chips in Australia. Whilst there are 16 ingredients, it's mainly flavorings, oils, and starches to keep the chicken together when frying. Here are all the ingredients in our KFC fries. We counted 34 ingredients. It looks pretty similar, so I don't know what we're doing over here. Do we really need them anymore to make them look roughly the same? <laughs> Let's see if ours are different colors to yours. I mean, they taste incredible. They taste. You are incredible for our show. Australia sources its chicken from three local farms, Ingham's, Steggles, and Golden Farms. 
KFC says that at least 97% of the chicken meat is delivered throughout the week to keep it fresh and then prepared on site. Most of its produce is also locally sourced, such as the lettuce, the tomatoes, the canola oil used for frying, and the flour used to make the buns and tortilla wraps. The potatoes for the fries are from Tasmania and Victoria, and it's only when there's bad weather that the potatoes are imported. KFC Australia has debunked a lot of myths on its website surrounding their chicken. It does not use genetically modified chickens, nor are its chickens full of artificial hormones or steroids. To support this, KFC Australia are members to the Australian Chicken Meat Federation, which ensures a strict code of practice for the welfare of animals and domestic poultry. However, KFC Australia has not signed the Better Chicken Commitment, whereas other competitive brands are taking the lead KFC also doesn't have any plant-based options. It did trial one back in 2022, but no permanent items have been added to the menu as of yet. KFC UK and some other countries in Europe have already agreed to better welfare for the chickens, but not in Australia. Do better, Australia. Do better. All of the KFC chickens are raised on U.S. farms and use the USDA and FDA's standards, which actually prohibits the addition of hormones in poultry across the country. This means there are no added hormones or steroids in American KFC chicken. And from 2019, all chicken purchased from KFC US has not contained antibiotics. In 2022, KFC released its chicken welfare report to account for all of the progress it made. From exclusive items to portion sizes, we wanted to see all the differences between Taco Bell in the US and Australia. This is Food Wars. At Taco Bell in Australia, you can order tacos in the units of one taco or two tacos, also known as the double taco supreme. Our tacos in the US come in orders of one, three, or a 12 taco party pack. Here is our cheesy burrito. Okay, I got a beefy melt burrito, which kind of looks similar and we're going to measure it now. It measures. Okay, so this is about six inches. And the girth. We're gonna have to get a little crafty to measure the girth. So now let's measure this little piece of paper to see what the girth is. The amount of times I've said that word. The girth is seven inches. So that's actually seven inches, which is the same as Australia. Very cool. Now let's see how much our burrito weighs. Here is our Crunch Wrap Supreme. The length is six and a half inches. Six and one fourth, I would say. Australia is really beating us with these portion sizes. And what about the drinks? In Australia, they come in the following sizes, regular and large. In the US, Taco Bell drinks come in three sizes, small, medium, and large. Let's measure them. Here's everything that you can get at a Taco Bell in Australia that you can't find in the US. And here's everything you can get at Taco Bell in the US that you won't be able to find in Australia. We're gonna break these down into categories and go through them all, starting with the Australian burritos. We have a jalapeno crunch burrito, a chipotle crunch burrito, and a boss burrito. Now I'm really intrigued to try all these because I have never tried them before. So I'm gonna start off with the jalapeno crunch burrito. Ooh, ooh, packed with jalapenos, I can see. So you got some rice, jalapenos, beef. Yep, you've got some sauce on it and tomato. That's really hot. I know it looks like I'm in a lot of pain right now, but the pain is good because it's actually a really delicious burrito. Here are our exclusive burritos. Let's start with the cheesy double beef burrito. I'm gonna take a bite of this. This is what it looks like on the inside. They didn't come this way. We sliced them in half. Everything that I would want in a Taco Bell taco, just in a burrito form. It's very good. So in this burrito, we have some rice. It looks like there's tomatoes and a healthy portion of the ground beef. There are something called fiesta strips in here, which I think are fried strips of tortilla that are dyed red. I see something red in here, but it looks totally like melted. So maybe like 
all the moisture just kind of made them soft and not crunchy anymore, but it still tastes really good. Now we shall try the Chipotle Crunch Burrito. We've got some little tortilla chips, I presume. Just like an artificial cheese taste, bit of a smoky flavor to it. I like that. Next we have the chicken enchilada burrito, which I've never had this before. This sounds yummy. I'm not a fan. Not a fan of that one. It's really salty, like too salty. Now we're gonna move on to the boss burrito. Wonder why they call it the boss. Maybe because it weighs about a kilogram. Oh, we've got some guacamole. It's okay. The toasted meat is a bit more predominant in this. It's very, it's a lot more gamey. And these are the grilled cheese burritos. So we have ground beef, chicken, and steak. So this one isn't grilled and this one is grilled. Do you see that burnt cheese on the outside? It's a little too much for me. It's like such an overwhelming amount of cheese that I think it's like crossing the line. But like burnt cheese always tastes good to me. So it's not like it tastes bad. It's just too much. We also have some burrito options that are technically exclusives, but they look very similar to some American options. So Australia has two burrito options, a grilled stuffed burrito and a beefy cheesy burrito. Nico, do these look similar to your grilled cheese burrito and your beefy milk burrito? Yes, we do have the grilled cheese burrito, which we just talked about, but we don't have the beefy milk burrito. Stuff just seems to disappear off the Taco Bell menu all the time. It's very odd. The main difference is ours comes with sour cream and Fiesta strips. We have a decent amount of exclusive tacos here in the US. So we have the spicy potato soft taco. Apparently Taco Bell has a lot of vegetarian options, so I'm guessing that's what that is. I was like, who is ordering a potato taco? Vegetarians, duh. Let's see what this tastes like. The seasoning on the potatoes is really good. They're very flavorful. I don't mind this. Next, we have the Doritos Locos and the Doritos Locos Supreme, which is my personal favorite thing to order at Taco Bell. And I think it's Joe's too. It's just so good. Whoever had the idea to make a shell out of an existing delicious chip, genius. That is so smart. The Doritos Locos tacos get this special little sleeve that says Doritos Locos on it. The only difference between a regular taco and a supreme version of a taco at Taco Bell is the addition of tomatoes and sour cream, which I prefer. I want it on the taco. Next, we have the Doritos Cheesy Gordita Crunch. This one has that special Doritos shell. Next, we have the Chalupa Supreme. And last but not least, we have the Black Bean Chalupa Supreme. I think presentation is like at the bottom of Taco Bell's list of priorities. The food usually tastes okay to just really, really good, but it looks like garbage most of the time. Don't get too hung up on what this all looks like. Also, if you're gonna get Taco Bell, just eat it immediately because if you let it sit for too long, your tacos will actually disintegrate. We only have one exclusive specialty item, which is the Lava Crispy Chicken Taco. Inside, you can see there's some lettuce, crispy chicken. Um, I believe that's been like deep fried crispy chicken, some cheese, shredded cheese, tomato, it's slightly mild, mildly spicy, but nothing unbearable. I think it's a nice chicken taco. So on the Taco Bell website, there is a section of their menu labeled specialties, and some of them are only found in the US, like the Mexican pizza, which I've never had before. I don't think I've ever seen one before, and I have to say I'm very underwhelmed. They were dropped from the menu back in 2020 in an effort to declutter the menu. This was met with a huge public outcry and even Doja Cat got involved with asking Taco Bell to bring it back. After two years, the item returned to Taco Bell's permanent menu in September, 2022. This looks like a Lunchables meal. Like it doesn't look like real food to me. It's actually a little unbelievable to me that people wanted this back so badly, but maybe it tastes better than it looks. Let's see. So this is the regular Mexican pizza with ground beef and this is the vegetarian version. So no beef, no nothing. It doesn't taste awful, but it doesn't taste good. Not to me. 
I don't know what Mexican pizza sauce is either. They're just like adding the word Mexican in front of stuff a lot. Um, I'm assuming that it just has the seasonings that you would find in like taco meat. I, I don't think I have to tell you that nothing that we've eaten today feels like authentic Mexican food. And also under the specialties menu is the black bean crunch wrap supreme. Our next exclusive item is a stacked hot chips. Now stay with me here. Okay, in Australia, chips are what you guys call fries. Unless we're talking about tortilla chips, which are also called chips. Nachos are not considered chips. It's just straightforward, right? Hot chip is basically a fry, so it's a hot chip. Our stack top chips are chips, but loaded with nacho toppings, including a protein, salsa, guac, sour cream, and a cheese sauce. So the fries are one of those things that disappears and reappears on the Taco Bell menu all the time. Today, they were unavailable, but maybe we'll find them again someday. Now we're onto the sides that you can find only in the US, I believe. We have black beans, black beans and rice, cheesy fiesta potatoes, and pintos and cheese, which I'm not gonna say this looks bad, but I know you're thinking it. For sides in Australia, we only have two options, seasoned hot chips and seasoned tortilla chips. Our tortilla chips have a Mexican seasoning. We managed to figure out what it was. It's now time for sauce talk. Sauce talk. So here we have like the traditional Taco Bell sauce packets. We have mild, hot, fire, and Diablo. They always give you so many sauces at Taco Bell. They're pretty good though. I actually feel like there's not much flavor difference between them, but the heat level definitely changes. Hot is the best one. Cause these it's like Diablo, especially sometimes it just makes food inedible to me. Next we have chipotle sauce, avocado ranch. I believe this is the spicy ranch. It's got a lot of colors in it. So no. <laughs> and I believe this is the red sauce, the enchilada sauce. I've never had any of these that come in the black containers, but I've gone through plenty of Taco Bell hot sauce packets, a lot. Our Australian sauce options are a chipotle mayo, a zesty ranch, and a fiesta salsa. I'm gonna try them all and see what the go is. Chipotle mayo is nice. Now the zesty ranch. Are you zesty? I would definitely say the Zesty Ranch has a citrusy flavor to it. The Fiesta Salsa looks like the party is all done. There was no spice to the salsa. We have a couple of dessert options you won't find in the US. We have churros and a chocadilla, which I presume is a, just a, it's a chocolate filled style quesadilla. Let's give this a try. It almost verges on the dark chocolate side, which I'm not the biggest fan of dark chocolate. Let's have a look at these churros. Look at all the sugar that is on this. This is the closest to a really good churro that I've had like since I was in Disneyland. Moving on to sweets, all we had available at our Taco Bell were these Cinnabon Delights, which are kind of like little donut holes filled with a cream cheese frosting. They're very delicious. If you can believe it, our Taco Bell did not have the cinnamon twists, but they are available at other locations. I don't know why they didn't have them at ours, but there's still a thing on the menu. We just couldn't get them. I've had the cinnamon twists before. They have like a good cinnamon sugar coating on them, but the actual twist itself does not taste that good. Yeah, these taste way better than the cinnamon twists. Get these. These are the exclusive drinks that Australia has. We have a Pepsi Max, a Solo, Sun Kiss, 7 Up, Phoenix Lemon Lemon Bitters, a Phoenix Traditional Lemonade, a Phoenix Ginger Beer, Lipton Peach Iced Tea, and an Ice Break Iced Coffee that was unavailable. A solo is basically like a lemon, like a lemonade. Lemon, lime and bitters is an Australian classic that's been around for hundreds of years. And that has like a lemon flavor to it. Got it and a bit of flavor as well from the Angostura bitters. 
So it's just a perfect combination. And what we have discovered was this was created to soothe the seasickness. Plus, we also have some alcoholic options available at some locations, including frozen margarita, Corona, and localized beers. However, they have not been made available yet in our state. And here are all of the exclusive drinks in the US. So we have Pepsi Zero Sugar, Cherry Pepsi, Mountain Dew Zero Sugar. We have Baja Blast, which I'm so shocked that they don't have in Australia. It's so quintessentially Taco Bell. Baja Blasts, they go hand in hand. Then we have Starry. This is G2, which is some kind of Gatorade. Strawberry Lemonade, Brisk Mango Fiesta. And then we have Brisk Dragon Paradise, which I don't know what that means. I was guessing Dragon Fruit? So Starry used to be, I believe, Sierra Mist. I don't remember what Sierra Mist tastes like. Like lemon lime. It's, a, it's just a lemon lime fizzy drink, a, a soda, a lemon lime soda. Yeah, it tastes exactly like Sprite. I do want to try G2. Don't know what that is. It has less than half the carbs of original Gatorade. This tastes like a pixie stick. That's so bizarre. The blue pixie stick is exactly what this tastes like. It's basically like a diet version of Gatorade. Okay, I really want to try this uh, brisk mango fiesta. That was actually really good. It's a little too sweet for me, but the mango flavor is really tasty. And then we have the Brisk Dragon Paradise, which has blackberry, raspberry, and dragon fruit in it. Oh no. That tastes like I'm drinking hand soap. That is not good. This tastes like fabric softener. I don't know what it is. It tastes like fizzy fabric softener. So Taco Bell in the US actually has a pretty extensive breakfast menu. I've never had it before. I've never woken up and just craved Taco Bell breakfast. But let's start by talking about all of the breakfast burritos. So here we have the cheesy toasted breakfast burritos. There's a bacon, sausage, and potato, which sounds very interesting to me. All right, let's see what the potato one tastes like. It's not bad. I think that I mostly like this, but I'm not really feeling the cheese sauce. It's a really overwhelming flavor, but the potatoes are really, really yummy. And on this side, we have the grande toasted breakfast burritos. We assume that these are the grande ones because they are significantly larger than the other ones. So we have steak, sausage, and bacon. I kind of, hmm, hmm. Let's go bacon. Let's go bacon. Let's see what it tastes like. dry it's so dry tastes good like the flavor is good because i mostly taste bacon so the cheesy toasted burritos don't have potato in all of them there is a potato option that does have potatoes in it but all of them do not contain potatoes whereas the grande toasted breakfast burritos all have potatoes in them moving on to the quesadillas we have a sausage bacon and a steak option i want to try the sausage they're a little cold, so they're not very melty anymore, but here's what this looks like. They do come pre-cut sometimes. Cheese pull. Well, <laughs> nope, <laughs> it's not happening. Okay, let's try the sausage quesadilla. I don't mind that. I don't know if it's something in their cheese or just what is going on today. It tastes like a little bit off. I can't put my finger on it. And I like Taco Bell tacos. I've had their cheese before. I know what it tastes like. We also have three options for breakfast crunch wraps. There is the California, the bacon, and the sausage. In all of the breakfast crunch wraps, you'll find egg, cheese, and a full hash brown in the center. This is the California crunch wrap. So the California crunch wrap has guacamole in it, which makes it California themed it tastes really good whatever they did to it tastes really yummy there's little bits of chopped up bacon in here i didn't really get any so i don't think it's just evenly dispersed but this is a really good flavor i actually would order this i'm also going to try the bacon one because there's jalapeno sauce in the bacon and the sausage i believe yeah that jalapeno sauce does not taste good to me it's like a shot of cumin into the mouth it's insane this would be so good if it didn't have that sauce. We also have 
a very, very greasy little ash brown. This is soaked. It's soaked through the paper. So here's what half of a hash brown looks like at Taco Bell. Oh, this is so greasy. I'm gonna be sick. Tastes like a pre-made hash brown. Not bad, not great. The Australian Crunchwrap Supreme Combo comes in at $14.95. So that's around $9.80 US dollars. In this, you'll get a Crunchwrap, regular fries, and a regular drink. A Crunchwrap Supreme Combo comes out to $8.29 or $12.87 Australian. For that, you get a Crunchwrap, a Crunch Taco, and a large drink. That's a 32% decrease in price in the US. The biggest single menu item on Australian Taco Bell menu is the Boss Burrito Box for $23.95 or $15.70 USD. You get a Boss Burrito, a Crunchy Taco, regular chips, churros, and a regular drink. We also have box options. Our biggest is currently the deluxe build your own craving box where we get a choice of a specialty item like a cheesy gordita crunch or a grilled steak cheese burrito, two classic items, a side and a drink. All of that comes out to $9.49 or $14.73 Australian. If you were to get a similar order in Australia, it would come out to $24.80 or $15.78 US dollars. I do find that the, the prices are more expensive in Australia. I would say that Taco Bell is definitely on the cheaper end of the spectrum when it comes to fast food in the US. I feel like the prices haven't changed astronomically from when I was younger, whereas other fast food places here, the prices have jumped a lot. So thanks Taco Bell for staying relatively cheap. I have never eaten at Taco Bell before. I know, shock, horror. But Taco Bell isn't as popular in Australia as I know it to be over in the States. There's not many Taco Bells around, Taco Bell, I think, is starting to build some more franchises here, but it's not that popular. We have some really great Mexican food in Australia, like Mexican fast food chains here already. In 2018, Taco Bell shared an explosive growth plan to open several franchises in Australia. They failed to capture the Australian market in 1980 and again in 2005. This expansion plan was for 50 stores, but to date they've only opened 40. I don't think Taco Bell is a true representation of the Mexican cuisine. I think it is a Western interpretation of maybe their palate and like what, what they would like. Taco Bell's not authentic Mexican food. I don't feel like I have to say that. They've kind of created this brand image uh, that feels a little stereotypical. Do you guys remember those Chihuahua Taco Bell commercials? Like, yeah, that little dog was cute, but come on. The commercials are really, they're cringe. I don't know how else to say it. They're like kind of embarrassing now. I think in the US, Taco Bell has like a really strong cult following. The people who love Taco Bell love Taco Bell. They have their go-to order. They definitely get Baja Blast, so. As much as I don't think it's everyone's favorite fast food here, it definitely has a decent amount of people who absolutely love it. For me, it's one of those things that I only get after like drinking. I'm, I'm never like in the mood for it is the thing. It kind of just happens. Taco Bills is a fast food Mexican restaurant in Australia that sued Taco Bell, claiming the brand was too similar and wanted to block it from operating in Victoria. I have never heard of Taco Bills in my life. I didn't even know that was a thing. I feel like that would be the Wish version <laughs> of Taco Bell. I've never heard of it. Maybe it only operates in Victoria. If anyone's watching this and has eaten at Taco Bell's, um, is it any good? Taco Bell might be late to the party in Australia, which has several established Mexican restaurant chains to compete with. The most popular chain is Zambrero with 229 locations. Other chains like Guzman and Gomez and Mad Mex are also well established. Also, I have to add in, Guzman and Gomez is really, really good. That would be, in my opinion, the, one of the best fast food Mexican restaurants that we have here. But also, what is Zambrero? Um, I know that it's apparently meant to be the most popular, but I've, I don't even know what a Zambrero is. Unfortunately, because Taco Bell is pretty new in Australia, 
They say that they haven't gathered enough information to accurately represent the nutritional info of their food. In the US, a Taco Bell Crunchy Taco has 170 calories. A Crunchwrap Supreme contains 540 calories. Currently, there is no publicly available ingredient information for Taco Bell in Australia. All we have is an allergens list. Australia, if you thought that was going to spare you from getting roasted, think again. The Australia allergens list refers to shredded cheese as cheese angel hair. What's up with that? Why are you calling it that? Also, according to our allergens list, several items, including our seasoned ground beef, our nacho cheese sauce, our zesty ranch sauce, and many more may contain shellfish. The website says that this is because they aren't manufactured or produced in the vicinity of this allergen. But we still found the idea of fishy beef funny. So is there anything that you should be on the lookout for with Taco Bell's ingredients in the US? One thing to note from the Taco Bell menu is the use of yellow five food coloring in the Doritos Locos taco shell and also in the Mountain Dew Baja Blast. It's not gonna stop me from ordering either of those if I'm being so honest. Lucky for us, neither the Dorito Taco Locos nor the Baja Blast are available at our restaurants. In the UK, yellow five is on the list of six food colors, which when added to foods must contain the following warning, may have an adverse effect on the act, may have an, may have an adverse effect. <laughs> this is what's happening to me in real time right now. In the UK, yellow five is on the list of six food colorings, which when added to foods must contain the following warning, may have an adverse effect on activity and attention in children. A 2015 study also found that it had a significant genotoxic effect and that prolonged exposure could cause cancer. Can we get some dancing rats on the screen, please? <laughs> The FDA also says that it may cause itching and hives in some people. I have a story to tell you right now. This is a real thing on the Taco Bell website under the Mango Fiesta drink page. It says there ain't no party like a mango party. No, seriously. I have a friend who went to it last year and apparently the whole thing takes place in a five-story mango tree. The brisk Mango Fiesta sure knows how to throw a rager. From calorie count to portion sizes, we wanted to find out the biggest differences between Subway in the US and in Australia. This is Food Wars. The standard Subway sandwiches in Australia come in two sizes, a six inch and a foot long, which is a 12 inch. The subs in the US also come in two sizes, six inch or foot long, which is 12 inches. In 2013, a Facebook post went viral after someone measured their foot long to be just 11 inches long. A lawsuit was filed, but eventually dropped because the plaintiff's attorney learned that the breads arrive frozen and are stretched then baked in the store. So there is gonna be some discrepancies in the size and shape of each sub. I guess we better check and see how long our foot long actually is. It's a foot long. I actually think this might be a little over 12 inches. To me, it looks like it's 12 and a half to 12, maybe 0.7 inches long. The US offers catering. If you order the easy order sandwich platter, you get five foot long sandwiches cut into threes for a total of 15 pieces. Australia also has a catering menu. Our platter is called the classic sub platter and it is the same as the US. So they weren't able to give us the party sub, which I am devastated about because I didn't realize that a party sub was actually six foot. I have an idea of my mind what six foot would look like, but I don't actually know. I'm gonna say, I need to measure this because I need to see. That is how big the subway would be. Who has a big enough uh, oven to cook this? The drink sizes in Australia are not quite straightforward. We've got two standard sizes for your soft drinks. There's a 390 ml bottle and a 600 ml bottle. But then the other drinks come in a range of sizes, just depending on the manufacturer. We keep things a little simpler in the US by having fountain drinks and they come in four sizes. You can get a small, a medium, a large, or the gallon. This is a gallon of lemonade. Subway does also sell bottle drinks and they come in a range of sizes. Here is everything that you can find in an Australian Subway that you can't find in the US. And here is everything you'll find on Subway's menu in the US that you won't be able to find in Australia. One thing to know is that Subway lets you customize your sandwiches in whatever way you want, but for the purpose of this video, we're only gonna be looking at the advertised menu items. Otherwise, we would be here all day. We have three types of bread in Australia. We have wheat bread, 
white bread and malted rye. And the malted rye looks really, really nice. Look how squishy and soft that is. And now, do you want to eat me? The U.S. has four types of breads. Artisan Italian, Artisan Flatbread, Hearty Multigrain, and Italian Herbs and Cheese. Let's start with our subs. In Australia, every advertised sandwich flavor is also available as a wrap or a salad. Wraps come in a white, gluten-free, or a multigrain. And our salads can be a small or a large. For the fillings of a sub, wrap, or salad, you can get a three pepper chicken tender. Ooh, there is a lot of mayo and that chicken is heavy. And we have our barbecue pulled pork. I didn't know what I was expecting, but that is a lot of barbecue sauce on that. And then we have our chicken and bacon ranch melt. So I know that you guys in America love your ranch dressing. Ranch isn't that popular here. I can't see any cheese, but I presume there would be cheese because if you're calling something a melt. Oh, there's bacon as well. This is so good. I don't know why we don't do much sandwiches or anything with ranch. I really like ranch. And then we have our chicken classic, which I presume just might be like a chicken schnitty. schnitty. Chicken schnitty is chicken schnitzel. Um, obviously abbreviated in Australia. It's just a nice piece of chicken, really simple. Just a good classic chicken schnitzel sandwich, really. And now we have our chicken schnitzel, which is weird, I thought that was a chicken schnitzel. I swear that the, the chicken looks the same. What makes this a chicken schnitzel and the other one just a classic chicken? Oh, I guess that's not crumbed, but it looked crumbed to me. This is more crumbed than that. So now we have the buffalo chicken and Apparently over in America, you don't use the same sauce as we do. I'd like to know what sauce you guys use because this is looking like to me a bit more of a sweet chili sauce. A slight spice towards the end. Now we have our leg ham and then we have our pizza melt. God, they did not shy away from all that salami. Then we have our seafood sensation. What is a seafood sensation? I don't want the C in my sandwich. Who's ordered this? Surely not, like, surely not. So basically all that, that inside, that's crab. We call it here like crab stick, I guess, but it's like processed crab. I don't know how much crab is really in it. That's a crime, that's a criminal offense. And now we have our smashed falafel. So in Australia, we have a really large Middle Eastern culture um, that's influenced a lot of our foods. Oh, all my Middle Eastern friends would be so, Disappointed right now. I want to see how this compares to other falafels. And now we have our steak melt with a smoky chipotle sauce and then our veggie delight with avocado. Ton of veggies stacked on a multi-grain rye roll. My favorite one was a ranch. I love the ranch. Bring more ranch to Australia, please. Okay, so what do we got? This is the buffalo chicken, and then we have the cold cut combo. I kind of want to see what's in this one. I don't think I've ever tasted bologna in my entire life. Should I taste it? It tastes like a combination of ham and salami, but I'd rather just have ham or salami. It's a little salty because of all the meat in it, but bologna is just okay for me. This is the BLT, a grilled chicken, the steak. I don't... Uh, I kind of just want to see what the vibe is with the steak. What does it mean to have steak at Subway? You know, it looks like to me the same beef that they use to make their Philly cheesesteak sandwiches, that like shredded beef. That's not that bad. Then we have the turkey and ham. We have roast beef, ham, rotisserie chicken. This is the pizza sub. It is like soaked through the paper. I think we need to try this one. I've never had the pizza sub before. It smells very like Italian herbs and spices, tomato. So it's not pizza sauce, it's marinara sauce with pe big pepperonis. There are also some green peppers and red onions in here with lettuce and some cheese. It's not as satisfying as just eating a pizza. I don't get it. This one's a miss for me. 
The pepperoni does taste really good though. We also have a veggie delight and a spicy Italian. Then we have the Subway series subs. This is a collection of 12 sandwiches that was introduced back in 2022 and they've added three more options since then. If you don't know what the Subway series sandwiches are, they're preset sub options. So instead of you going down the line and picking everything that goes into your sandwich, these are all like preset options. We have the Grand Slam ham and the Titan turkey. Both of these contain 33% more meat. I don't really know why. I'm gonna try to rapid fire go down the list of all of these sandwiches that are right in front of me. So, so please, please, please be nice. We have the garlic roast beef, the beast, the Philly, teriyaki blitz, the outlaw, the monster, the hot shot Italiano, the ultimate BMT, supreme meats, the boss, all pro sweet onion teriyaki, the elite chicken and bacon ranch, the great garlic, the sliced avo mexicali, pickleball club, the all American club, the subway club, and the sliced avo turkey cali club. After a while, none of these names sound like English to my mouth or ears. I do want to see what the great garlic looks and tastes like. I love garlic. I don't think I've ever had much garlic on a sandwich now that I'm thinking about it. I definitely have. I'm just like blanking on what sandwich it was. It looks like it might be the grilled chicken pieces or the rotisserie chicken pieces. There's lettuce, red onion, tomato, definitely some probably garlic mayo or garlic aioli and shredded cheese, which I feel like I haven't seen in a Subway sandwich before. Aioli, oh, that's a cute baby name. I never thought I would say this. I think it's too garlicky. The aioli is just a bit much. I feel like if they just dialed back how much they put in the sandwich, it wouldn't be so overwhelmingly garlicky where that's like all I can taste. But unfortunately, it's not bad though. It's just like too much sauce. I do wanna try the pickle ball. I love pickles, so I hope this is pickle heavy. If not, why the name? There's definitely pickles. In the pickle ball, we have red onion, lettuce, tomato, honey mustard, ham, obviously pickles, and bacon. I don't know about this one. It feels like all of the ingredients aren't necessarily working very well together. It mostly just tastes like red onion. I just feel like our quantities are a little off. And these two are actually online exclusives. This is the Champ and the Bella Matza, which if you recall, was the sandwich that I would be if I was a Subway sandwich. Because why wouldn't I wanna be the prettiest sandwich? In 1975, Subway created its flagship sandwich, the Italian BMT. The acronym originally stood for Brooklyn Manhattan Transit System, but later was known as the biggest, meatiest, and tastiest. Both countries' version of this sub are a little different. In Australia, our Italian BMT contains salami, pepperoni, and leg ham. Let's try it, shall we? Is this the biggest, meatiest, and tastiest sub I've ever had? I'll find out. I would never personally ever think to go to Subway and get three different meats on a sub. I don't know, that thought just never crosses my mind. In the US, our Italian BMT contains Genoa salami, black forest ham, and pepperoni. This is such a meat heavy sandwich. It's so heavy. It's, it's dented the bread so bad. I think that I would like this more if the ham just wasn't there. I feel like it's not really adding anything, but the salami and pepperoni do taste really good together. This is not bad. I really like it. I like whatever vinaigrette dressing that they have on it is really, really tasty. This is a pretty good sandwich. What's up with leg ham? It's the leg of ham? <laughs> it's the leg of the pig? You're allowed up to 10 toppings when you customize a sub at Subway, and we actually noticed that there are a few exclusives that you can only get in the US, like American cheese, pepper jack cheese, provolone cheese, Monterey cheddar, banana peppers, and we also have some exclusive extras, like the Belgiozio fresh mozzarella and Capicola ham, also known as Gabagool. I know Harry's gonna want me to say Gabagool. What if we combined as many U.S. exclusive toppings as possible into one U.S. only sub? That's what this is. So the U.S. only sub is made up of the hearty multigrain bread, the cold cut combo, which is ham, salami, and bologna, pepper jack cheese, the Belgiozo fresh mozzarella, banana peppers, creamy sriracha, and yellow mustard. This sounds awful. It doesn't look any better, but I'm going to taste it. It's sub. The sauces are doing a lot of work right now in covering up all the weird flavors, but yeah, don't, don't get this. It's not very good. We also have some exclusive toppings in Australia. We have our natural cheddar cheese 
our mozzarella cheese and our old English cheese. Oh, that looks really orange. And in some locations, you can even get beetroot and pineapple. Pineapple and beetroot are really, really popular in Australia. Like we love pineapple or beetroot on our burgers. It's not a surprise that Subway stocks pineapple and beetroot. I think it's really weird that it's not everywhere. Like I would have assumed that it'd be at all Subway stores. Our exclusive extras are a double meat and smoky bacon and carrots, which is an outrage. I can't believe you don't have that in the US. What about an Australian only sub? And here's one with malted rye, a chicken schnitzel, smoky bacon, old English cheese, and then we have Thousand Island dressing and blue cheese dressing. It was just like too many flavors, too many creamy like textures, too many creamy sauces in it. Like this is not a true representation of Australia. Subway also does breakfast, which I had no idea about. You can get any of the following in either a wrap or a flatbread. So we have the bacon, egg and cheese, the black forest ham, egg and cheese, and the steak, egg and cheese. There's like a bunch of folded egg in here. Here are our exclusive breakfast items that come either as a sub or a wrap. Starting off, we have our bacon and egg sub, and then we have our ham, egg and cheese, and then we have our ham, tomato and cheese. Onto the sides, in the US we have a lot of chips. It does vary depending on which subway you go to, but at our subway we have Doritos, Classic Lay's, Baked Lay's, Harvest Cheddar Sun Chips, Miss Vicky's Jalapeno Chips, and we also have a Go-Go Squeeze, which is like a little applesauce pouch for babies. Or adults, I would enjoy one of these. And in Australia, these are our exclusive sides. We have an avocado toasty, which looks disgusting. And then we have our cheesy garlic toasty, our garlic and herb toasty, our southern style chicken bite. And now we have our meatball mozza pot with six pieces of little meatballs in there. That's yum. It's like the same meatball that they would put on your sub. And then we have our chipotle quesadilla, which just looks a little bit sad, really. Then it's just a bit of sauce and four pieces of, of onion and our chips. So our chips come in our Smith's crinkle cut original, our Smith's crinkle cut salt and vinegar, and a new and limited edition Smith's meatball sub crinkle cut. There's nothing meatball-y about this. You know what time it is. It's time for sauce talk. Sauce talk. We have mustard, oil, red wine vinegar, creamy sriracha, buffalo sauce, sweet onion teriyaki, peppercorn ranch, and Baja Chipotle. I want to know what the sweet onion teriyaki tastes like. It looks very gelatinous. The flavor is not as strong as I'd like it to be. I feel like I'm mostly getting the oil. Peppercorn ranch. That is a really good ranch. I like how it's got a bit of acidity to it. It's like tart, more tart than a regular ranch is. That is really yummy, actually. Here are all the sauces that are exclusive to Australia. We have the habanero hot sauce, a blue cheese dressing. We have a smoky barbecue, a chipotle southwest, a sweet onion dressing, ranch dressing, tomato sauce, spicy mayonnaise, Thousand Island dressing, and sweet chili. I only have a plain chip, so that's what we're gonna work with. I wanna try the habanero hot sauce because I do like a bit of spice. That is spicy and I thought I played it too safe because I didn't put too much in my chip, but oh my God, I wanna try sweet onion. That's a nice sauce. We do have one exclusive cookie flavor here in the US and that is the oatmeal raisin cookie. I love oatmeal raisin cookies. They're underappreciated. I love Subway cookies because they stay soft and chewy. It's really, really good. I could eat 10 of these. And we have one exclusive cookie flavor in Australia, which is the chocolate chip rainbow cookie. So I presume it's filled with M&Ms. That's yum. 
So something amazing happened when we went to go pick up our huge Subway order. They actually had the footlong cookie. So obviously we got it. We have to try it. Look at this. They also had a footlong pretzel and a footlong churro. These two are collabs. The pretzel is a collab with Auntie Anne's and the churro is a collab with Cinnabon. Two of my favorite mall spots. Come on. Oh, oh. The texture is honestly not what I was expecting. It doesn't really taste like a normal chocolate chip cookie. It more so tastes like a cookie cake. Let's try the pretzel. I love a pretzel. It's a good pretzel. The churro. It's all right. And to finish off the exclusives, we have some drink options that you can only get in the US. We have regular coffee, chocolate milk, Diet Coke, Hubert's Lemonade, Subway Fresh Brewed Iced Tea, Sweetened or Unsweetened, Dasani Water, Gatorade Cool Blue, Honest Kids Super Fruit Punch, Simply Lemonade, Simply Orange, Simply Apple, Vitamin Water, Vitamin Water Power C, 1% Low Fat Milk, Monster Energy Green, and Monster Energy Zero Ultra. So sorry that you don't have Diet Coke in Australia, but I hear that you guys like Coke Zero more anyway. Here are our exclusive drinks. We have our Coca-Cola Vanilla, a Coca-Cola Vanilla Zero Sugar, our Raspberry Fanta, Mount Franklin, that's just spring water, our Powerade Mountain Blast, Powerade Flowberry, our Pump Water, our Pump Water Berry, our Cascade Lemon Lime and Bitters. Now, interesting story with Lemon Lime and Bitters. Lemon Lime and Bitters is a classic Australian drink over a hundred years ago, lemon lime and bitters was invented by an Australian who basically found a way to cure seasickness. It's so popular in Australia, grabbing a lemon lime and bitters drink. And I remember, I think every Aussie kid can definitely relate to the first time they had lemon lime and bitters. And, um, you know, because bitters has like a touch, like the ever so slightest bit of alcohol in it. So you'd have a sip and you'd be like, oh my God, I just had some alcohol and this is wild. And then we move on to our Lipton iced tea in lemon flavor, Lipton iced tea in peach. And then we have our V Energy drink and our V Energy blue drink. V Energy drinks are very similar to a Red Bull. It's just an Australian energy drink. We have our daily orange juice and our just juice apple. Subway was founded in 1965 by Fred DeLuca and Peter Buck in Connecticut. Now it has the most stores out of any fast food chain in the entire world. Back in 2014, it was reported that Subway served about 7.6 million subs every day. Subway landed in Australia in 1988 with a store in Perth. Now we have 1,215 stores, and that's as of July 2023, which is the largest number of stores outside the U.S., that still pales in comparison to the 20,000 in the US. Unfortunately, Subway's had to close over 200 stores in Australia since 2015, as people's eating habits have changed and fast food became less popular and the pandemic took its toll. If you see Subway modernizing stores and streamlining the menu, it's part of an attempt to stop that trend. Until 2022, Subway had barely updated its menu. The Subway series that we showed you earlier is probably its biggest menu update in its 57 year history. Also as part of its PR drive, in July 2023, Subway was offering a lifetime of free subs if you legally changed your name to Subway. And according to the sandwich chain, nearly 10,000 people entered the competition. You guys, don't change your name to Subway. I wouldn't say that I go to Subway Often, I would go to Subway if I am keen for something relatively healthy. I definitely do not go to Subway often, if ever. I used to go a lot in high school just for the cookies because that's honestly my favorite part of Subway. I actually really do like Subway. I love the maple sub as well. Um, the maple, oh my gosh, the best thing to get when you are kind of being a bit cheeky um, is a maple sub with the Italian herbs and cheese. Oh, oh my God, unreal. I love it so much. I don't love Subway. There are so many good sandwich places around me that I've never felt the urge to, and I don't think their sandwiches are that good. They're like passable. A good turkey sub from Subway does hit, but it's not something I find myself craving. 
Which country is getting the better deal on its subs? Let's compare a turkey foot long sub in both countries. In the US, one of these will cost you $11.49. In Australia, a turkey foot long sub will cost you $12.95, so it's actually cheaper in Australia. In the US, you can get a Subway meal that's kind of like a combo through their catering. This gets you a foot long, chips, and a cookie for $10.99. In Oz, we can get a similar deal called a sub box, which includes a foot long, two cookies, and a 600ml drink. This will cost you $23.60 AUD. Let's compare the classic turkey sub to see if there's any differences in calories. In the US, a turkey foot long sub contains 540 calories, 8 grams of total fat, 80 grams of carbs, 12 grams of sugar, and 1,680 milligrams of sodium. In Oz, a turkey footlong sub contains 526 calories. The most calorific item you'll find at Subway in the US is the Beast. This is a footlong sub and it has 1,460 calories. The most calorific menu item in Australia is the three pepper chicken footlong sub, which has 1,002 calories. Over the years, Subway's come under fire for some of the ingredients they use in their sandwiches. So here are some of the claims that we thought we would talk about that we found interesting. The first controversy was the petition in 2014 for the removal of a word that I cannot pronounce, but I'm going to attempt to anyway, as do decarbonamide, found in bread products in fast food chains such as Subway. What is as do decarbonamide, you ask? is a chemical compound used in the food industry as an additive to condition dough and bleach flours, predominantly in white bread and cereals. However, its other use is a blowing agent to make foamed plastics in products like yoga mats. The petition grew a lot of attention and just days later, Subway announced they were phasing out the ingredients. While Subway was targeted for its healthy food claims, other major fast food chains such as McDonald's and Starbucks were also subject to the use of the chemical. Secondly, Subway's bread was brought to the Supreme Court in Ireland after it was found to be too sugary to be classified as bread. It began when Bookbinders, an Irish franchise for Subway, didn't want to pay taxes on the bread, arguing that it should be classified as a staple food. However, the judges found that the bread was part of the confectionery category because of the ratio of sugar to flour was nearly five times too high to be classified as a food staple, according to Ireland's Value Added Tax Act of 1972. The sugar in the bread can only contain 2% of its weight from the flour, whereas Subway's bread options contain 10%. Subway's response was to defend its ingredients, and a spokesperson for the chain said Subway's bread is, of course, bread. In the UK, the bread is still classified as bread, but with a higher sugar content, so it's just Ireland who will have to pay the higher tax. In 2021, a lawsuit was filed against Subway claiming the tuna in the sandwiches was anything but tuna. In response to the claim, Subway insisted the tuna was high quality and 100% real, and they even launched a website called subwaytunafacts.com. Following these claims, a reporter from the New York Times published a lengthy report where they sent samples of the tuna from Subway off to a lab to be tested. The lab concluded that either the meat was so processed that they could not detect tuna or a different substance was being used. In 2023, the customer who filed the lawsuit asked to withdraw the claim, saying that she was pregnant and needed to focus on her health. The claim has been dismissed and cannot be brought again to court due to their agreement. Can you just imagine one day you just ordered like your food flown to you? Like it just surpasses all traffic. You don't even get stuck in it. Like Uber Eats, like no problems that you've got Uber flying to you.